Anyways, let's take a look at what else is happening in Butler Athletics, fine? Welcome to the Button Jackie Selleck Bowl for this PFL matchup between the Butler Bulldogs and the Davidson Wildcats. We're getting ready for kick here, but we're going to take a look first at other events happening at Butler Athletics. For the past few months, the Butler University women's basketball team has been working hard in practice to prepare for their upcoming games. From shooting drills to defensive application, the group hopes to be a significant threat for their opponents to face. We asked head coach Kurt Godlewski on his mentality for the season. Are we getting better every day? Um, are the players um, continuing to grow with our understanding of how we need to play to be able to compete in the Big East? And then uh, ha I have a lot of confidence um, as we go into things because we, we um, address some needs in the off season with, uh, through recruiting and um, have been excited with the development and growth of our younger players and think they can help us. Another important part to the Bulldogs season is their attitude reflecting the past. It has been 26 seasons since Butler women's basketball has entered the NCAA tournament, which weighs heavy on Godlewski's mind. Honoring that team, um, the 96 team that got into the NCAA, NCAA tournament, it's been 26 years now since um, you know, they did that and had that great accomplishment for our program and we want to be the second team to do that so it's really kind of something to just, you know, remind us every day that that's what we're working for. The Bulldogs take on Trine in an exhibition game on Thursday, November 4th, followed by a regular season game versus Indiana on November 10th at Hinkle Fieldhouse. Uh, well, first I'd like to say I think it's an honor, you know, to be voted by my peers and my teammates, the guys I work with every day. Uh, so it's a great honor to be voted as a captain, and I take that with great pride. And uh, it's uh, it's challenging at times to be, you know, have a leadership role, but it's definitely really rewarding when you see, you know, the guys you're playing against and um, they're getting after it every day and they're, you know, excelling and stuff like that. It's, uh, it's really cool to see. There's definitely some things that, there's good stuff that we've done in the past and that we need to continue to do, but there's definitely some bad stuff in there as well that we need to cut out, and that's what you know this week of practice is for. I definitely want to start with uh, winning, winning a lot. You know, I think it, it comes down every Saturday. It's a, it's a win. That's the ultimate goal. You know, um, whether how that happens, if it's I have a great game, if I have a bad game, whatever. If we end up winning, I think uh, that's the ultimate goal. And that's the only goal that really matters. Anthony Cleva here with Butler Athletics, and I'm going to be taking a look into this past week of Butler Sports and what's ahead. Moving inside Hinkle Fieldhouse, the Butler women's volleyball team is coming off a three sets to none win over Big East foe Georgetown. Their next match is at Seton Hall October 23rd at 6 p.m. Next over to the soccer field, Butler men's soccer is coming off a 2-1 double overtime victory against Marquette as Tommy Visser moves it over to Quint Bright Cruz for his first collegiate goal to end it. The men's soccer team is back in action against DePaul October 23rd at 2 p.m. Over to the women's side, Butler continuing their strong season with a 12-2-1 record after defeating DePaul 2-0. Their next two matches are on the road at Xavier and rounding out their final road trip of the season at Villanova on Sunday, October 24th at 1 p.m. To the gridiron we go, Butler is taking on Davidson at 1 p.m. today, looking for their first conference win of the season after falling to Moorhead State last week, 31-8. That's all for Butler Sports this week. I'm Anthony Cleva, Butler Athletics. This is Jacob Lindsay here at Hinkle Fieldhouse, just after the finish of the Butler 
men's basketball blue and white scrimmage. I was able to talk to two Butler students, Caroline and Connor, about their past experiences with Butler basketball and what they're looking forward to with full capacity back in Hinkle Fieldhouse. So my experience last year attending some of the Hinkle games was, it was still fun, but just the atmosphere wasn't there. Fans weren't getting into it as much. Um, I know that affected the players, just not having Hinkle being as loud as it normally is and just having the same lively atmosphere that Hinkle always brings. Yeah, so being a senior, definitely I've gone to a lot of great games, but I would definitely say sophomore year when uh, Butler beat Villanova at home on Kamar Baldwin's buzzer shot, that was great. Six seconds left. Kamar looks up, working against Gillespie. Baldwin for the win! Yeah! If you're trying to find the next opportunity for a full capacity Hinkle Fieldhouse, the dogs will be in action next Saturday, October 30th in their first exhibition game in Hinkle Fieldhouse. By Melissa Johnson, drumline director Mike Pio, color guard instructor Lauren McCullough, and graduate assistant Stephen Martinez. Ladies and gentlemen, your Butler Marching Band! In 1969, the Beatles released a song on the Yellow Submarine album that rings true to Butler. 
This song is Hey Bulldog. Butler fans, can you say hey? Can you say Bulldog? Now you can help us with this tune. The band, cheerleaders, and dance team will help you sing along. Ladies and gentlemen, please rise as we honor America with the playing of our national anthem.
Hello and welcome to the Bud and Jackie Selleck Bowl for this PFL matchup between the visiting Davidson Wildcats and the Butler Bulldogs. Davidson enters this game 4-1 on the season and 3-0 in PFL play. Butler is 2-5 and, and seeking their first win of their PFL campaign this year. Hello everyone, Joey Lindstrom alongside Drew Bevelheimer. These two teams squaring off Drew, battle of FCS opponents. Their first and second in rushing in the PFL, but Davidson is first in the country in yards per game rushing as well as rushing TDs. They defeat Presbyterian 70 to 35 last week because of that rushing attack. I can't imagine that strategy is going to change at all. No, I don't think it's going to change at all. And why would you? If you're good at something, keep doing it. And I think if you're Butler, you kind of take a note out of that playbook. You are second in rushing. Davidson is averaging 5.2 yards a carry right now. You're averaging 4.7. Try to beat them at their own game because not only are they effective at running, being able to run like that and score that many points, they take a lot of time off the clock and are able to produce points. So you want to take away their number of possessions. And if you commit to the run, you can keep that clock running and then you can limit their number of possessions and hopefully keep it a close game. The last time Butler played Davidson, they lost 52-10 to here at the Bowden Jackie Selleck Bowl. But last week, losing to Moorhead State was it has to be a wake-up call, right? I mean, with only 191 yards of total offense last week, they've only scored 32 points over their last four games, and all of those are PFL games. They have to figure out how to put points on the board, especially against a team like Davidson, who's the defending champs of the league. You are absolutely right, and I think, too, it goes back to that. Change your game plan a little bit. You have really good athletes all over the field, and you can run the ball. You have... Nick Orlando can run. Brett Bushka can run. A.J. Deinhardt, Michael Benefield. We can go through the list of guys who are averaging over four yards a carry. Believe in your offensive line. You have a great front five. You have really good blocking tight ends. Commit to the run and see what happens. And it is starting to rain a little bit. It looks like it has cleared up. Let's see what you can do on the ground. Butler and Davidson set to get started here. The Dogs are going to receive the opening kickoff. Other PFL games today, Moorhead State visits Marist. That's a battle of undefeated PFL squads. Dayton visits Valpo. San Diego and Presbyterian will square off today, as well as Stetson and Drake. As it stands right now, Davidson, Marist, and Moorhead State are tied for first in the PFL, followed by St. Thomas and San Diego, then Dayton, then Valpo. Then you have Presbyterian, Stetson, and Butler rounding out the bottom. Interesting to see a new kick returning face back there. That's Joey Audia. He's been taking the punt returns for Butler. Now going to take the kickoff return, I assume, with A.J. Dinehart back there. So I think the emphasis, Drew, for this opening drive, you said run the ball. I think that's probably the right strategy. you got to be the right state of mind. But at the same time, only 43 yards through the air last week. Can you do? Do you try to go pass? Do you try to uh, do you try to establish the run initially and go play action, or do you try to go quick passes? Maybe throw Davidson off. I think you would want to start by establishing the run because, as we know, then the defense has to respect it, and you'll start to see it open up the passing game a little bit. I think you commit to the run, and then you see where your passing game goes from there. On a kick. Caden Bonofsky, only one touchback this year, so he's going to keep the ball in play. Joey Audia back deep to return, as well as A.J. Deinhardt. And the Bulldogs... A.J. averages about 19 yards on a return because he's fielding it within the five-yard line. Yep, and I, and I think you can get out past the 25 with how well he's returning the ball. So set this tone of the game, and let's see how far he can return this kick. It's the Wildcats. It's the Bulldogs. PFL action kicking off here in Indy. Audio is going to return. And he'll be brought down past the 30. Nice return all the way down to the 34-yard line to start the position for Butler. Basically getting the first first down of the drive because usually you see guys put it in the end zone. So 
able to get you out to the 35, which kind of takes a little bit of pressure off you already. You know, okay, we're on the 35. If we have to punt, we can flip the field a little bit. So let's see what they come out and show us on offense. Brett Bushka last week struggled. Just 2 of 13 for 34 yards and an interception. A drop back to Johnny O'Shea deep, and that's going to be a little bit long. Bring up second down and ten. And if so right away they come out, come out trying to pass. Abs yep. Uh, so I don't think they heard me down on the sideline, which is okay. They <laughs> they have their own game plan. But if there's anything we've learned about Brett, is that he will bounce back. He is making mistakes early in his career. He's able to learn. And I'm expecting a much better game today. Well, he came off that injury, too, last week. And, and he didn't play against San Diego and came back. Expect him to maybe struggle a bit. Outside to Suchovitz on the right side. Good catch for about five yards to bring up third. And you can kind of see them already starting to change it up a little bit. Only his third reception of the season. Starting to get some new faces involved and, and trying to see what's going to work today against arguably the best team in the PFL. Offense averages normally 350 yards per game. Had a couple trouncings of Taylor and DePaul to boost those numbers earlier in the year. Trying to find that groove once again. Bush goes, sprint out left side. Looking for Flogger. He's got him on the sideline. That's a first down Bulldogs. So right away, Drew, three passes immediately. First one not so effective, but the next two, great. Really good, and you're getting a new guy involved that you don't see a lot of in Jared. Suchovich and also Yogi Flogger only one catch last week. He he is a pivotal part of this offense. You have to get him involved early and often, and that is what they are doing to open up the game. First and ten, Bulldogs. Hand off to Deinhart. Deinhart lowers the shoulder. He'll gain about four yards to bring up second down. Sets up second down and seven at the 48-yard line. Second and seven. Trips to Bush goes right. Johnny O'Shea to the bottom of your screen. Quick drop out to Flogger, who stumbles after he catches it, so that'll be just a one-yard gain. Looked like he had a little room there, too. Might have been able to fight for a first down, make a guy miss. But still, this is a good confidence boost for your offense, completing passes on the run you have had so far, getting four yards on that carry, showing you can move the ball. Even if you have to punt on this drive, you know in the back of your head, okay, we can move the ball on these guys. You can settle in. Well, this is a big third down. Two of 13 on third down last week versus the Eagles of Moorhead State. Dinehart in motion. Bushka's going to keep it himself. He'll get the first down and slide smartly. And those are the kind of things they're looking for when you get Brett Bushka back. He's a weapon. And you realize that. Put him in positions that he can go make plays. And on two carries so far, they're right around 15 yards. Keep putting that ball on the ground. You're going to keep getting those first downs. First and 10 for Butler. The Davidson 43, Bushka. Long ball, deep shot. Little bit long. Intended receiver was Thomas Brown. The freshman from Wendell, North Carolina. And that would have been a huge play to open up the, the game for Butler. Thomas Brown's first intended target of the year, too. Almost had a touchdown on it, just a little bit overthrown. Aaron snap. Dinehart picks it up and falls down. Bulldogs shoot themselves in the foot, and they're going to be behind, behind their own 50. Something you don't see very often, a mistake by Trevor Scott, a leader of that offensive line. But that's one of those things you, you really can't have happen against a team that is the number one in rushing, the, the number one team in the PFL, last year's champions. 
you can't spot them anything. You have to play a near perfect game, and we'll see if they can overcome that mistake. Third down and forever. 19 for the line to gain. Bushka got Dinehart over the middle. He's going to be short of the first down by about two yards. So we'll see what Coach Connor and Coach Voris have in store on fourth down here. Yeah, definitely in four down territory being on the 35 yard line. Leaving Brett Bushka in the game, so they're not going to put in Nick Orlando, who's usually the more running quarterback for the dogs. Well, Butler's 6 of 16 on fourth down this year. Most of those have been attempted in plus territory. It's fourth down and two. Biggest play of the game so far. Timeout for the Bulldogs. They're going to deliberate on this one. And definitely a smart timeout there by the dogs. You don't usually want to say so early in a game it can be a game-changing play, but it really could be. Being able to score points on your first drive and put Davidson on their heels a little bit could be huge for the outcome of this game. So they want to make sure that they have the best play they can think of, go through every page in that playbook, and make sure this is a for sure first down, or as for sure as you can be. Maybe they have an analytics sheet. They might. They might. They might. It would be a fun project for the students. To do. It would be a great project for the students. I'm sure somebody would be interested in that, yeah. sports analytics. Fourth and two upcoming, well, this series – all time, Davidson leads seven to six. They opened this series back in 2003. And Davidson won five straight. Then Butler won six straight from 20, 2009 to 2016. And then Davidson's been on a streak. They've won the last two meetings. Winning their last trip here to Indy, 52 to 10. Twin set for Bushka. Benefield in the backfield. Sprint out, left side. He's got Flogger on the catch. Toe taps on the sideline, but he's going to be out of bounds. First down, Bulldogs. And a great play drawn up there. And you saw them use that guy in motion, showing that they were in man coverage the whole way. Brett was able to read that and find Yogi for a first down. Again, having a little bit of the slip so far to start the day, though. Hopefully we can... Uh, Stay on our feet a little better because that could have been a big gain, but still a first down and a great catch. Strong eye pistol. Schwantz in the backfield. They're going to hand it to Benefield. He'll be brought down after a three-yard gain to bring up second down. Well, I agree. It seems that Davidson is playing a little bit on their heels. I think whenever you're an undefeated team and you're playing a winless team as far as conference play goes, you have that kind of edge, and it's almost natural to take that opposite team lightly. When you're starting on a defense, it's a big challenge. And you said it to start. Over the last four games, only 32 points, so only averaging eight points a game. What do you have to worry about? Well, the Bulldogs are showing them exactly what they need to worry about. Bushka, quick out to Benefield. And he'll be briefly wrapped up but pushed out of bounds after a two-yard gain. Stopped there by number 25, Jake Alexander. And what we're seeing from the offense right now is a little bit – different than what we've seen up to this point. Shorter passes. You're thinking it around the field, getting those first downs. It doesn't need to be pretty. You just need to get 10 yards every three plays, and that's what they're doing. They're marching their way down the field. There hasn't been a oh wow kind of play, but they're just slowly getting into field goal range now, and that's all you need to do. Davidson not able to get too much pressure quite yet. Sprint out. Bushka finds Flogger. Nice catch, and he'll be out of bounds past the first down marker. Seems a little more methodical. One thing I wanted to bring up, the leading, the sack leader for this Davidson defense, Jonathan Hammond. He's got 29 tackles on the year, six sacks. And for a young guy, just a sophomore, I mean, the PFL has to be on notice. So far, not a factor in this first drive, but he's a power to have in the front four. And that's definitely something that Coach Code was talking about in the meeting, maybe having a double-team design for him, whatever it may be, saying this is the guy that we have to make sure we block every play. Dinehart throws a stiff arm. 
He'll be pushed out of bounds. No gain on the play. It'll bring up second down and 10. AJ Deinhardt on the carry for Butler. Pushed out by 16. Well, Bush go through the air. Seven of nine on this drive. 42 yards. This drive is taking a lot of time off the clock. Almost half the quarter already gone. 14 plays, 46 yards. And a great field position to start. And now in the red zone, second and 10. Bushka. Over the middle. Was trying to find... Sam Rogers goes right through his hands. It's going to bring up third down. And those are the ones you really want to have. A definite first down and probably a touchdown. Maybe a touch overthrown, but still looked like it went through the hands. Definitely one you're going to want to have back. Pressure there by defensive tackle Jordan Reed. Third down. Bushka keeps it himself, gets a block from Deinhardt. Dives for the first down, and they're going to mark him at the 10-yard line. It might be short. Tyler Solomon on the stop. And this is going to bring up fourth down for the Dogs. It looks like they're going to keep the offense on the field. And I love that call. Even though usually I would probably want to kick, this is a tone-setting drive. You have gone eight minutes on this drive so far. You have kept their offense off the field, which is exactly what you want to do. Score six points here. Go for it. See what happens. A set. Bushka keeps it himself. Got some blockers. He's going to get the first down. Down at the five. Bulldogs inching closer and closer to that goal line. Seventeen plays have gone by for Butler. Sixty-one yards elapsed on this drive. We got four downs to get to Pater. Bushka, handoff. Deinhart tries to cut up. He's going to be stopped. Initial. Misdirection there by Jonathan Hammond and cleaned up by Jaden Pask. And having Jonathan Hammond out there, it's going to be hard to run outside the tackles. Definitely a start this game. Probably need to tire him out a little bit. But so far what's working is going more towards the middle and letting your guys up front show you the way. Let's see if they go back to it here on second and goal. O'Shea in motion. Bushka, fake handoff. Was looking for such of it. He's going to look for Schwantz in the end zone. And he drops it in the back line. This will bring up third down and nine. Goal to go. And what a block right there by A.J. Deinhardt eating the kneecaps of the would-be sacker. Giving Bushka time to throw the ball. And just very unlucky. It looked like Schwanz, if he had caught it, would have been in bounds. Huge opportunity here. No safeties. Bushka, sprint out, lofting it to Flogger. Touchdown, Bulldogs! Yogi Flogger! And a way to start the game, taking nine and a half minutes off the clock, which is one of the keys we said to start. You have to keep the best offense in the PFL off of the field, and they have done that and put up six points, about to be seven. You can't ask for a better opening drive. 20 plays, 66 yards, and a touchdown to reward. The Bulldogs lead 7-0 after their first drive. 525, here to go. 
in the first quarter. Nine-yard touchdown from Bushka to Flogger. That's the way to set the tone, just like you said, Drew. And not only that, Scott Abel's squad now has to go on offense. I have to imagine they're going to have a similar strategy of running the football, establish some kind of spot, hit you play action. Their leading touchdown catcher is uh, Jackson Sherrard. He's got four touchdowns on five receptions. Uh, that's what we call efficiency. That's right. Zurich is going to kick here. Back deep to return are number 21, Aaron Mione, and number eight, Braden Oakley. Oakley's going to take this on the right side, move back over to the middle. He's got some space. Oakley is going to be pushed out of bounds, and this will be great field position, almost equally great to what Butler had. 33-yard return for Oakley. And that is something you are a little susceptible to when you have a left deep left kick lined up. The field return, if you can bounce it outside far enough and have all your blockers up front, you can see a huge return, and that's what they were able to do. Lewis Calasimo behind center. He'll hand off up the middle to Dylan Sparks. Sparks will gain three yards. Well, Lewis Calasimo has an interesting story this year. He won the starting job in the fall in fall camp, but against uh, the Virginia Military Institute, he did not play well. He got benched, and then Burrell took over. Burrell didn't do so well. Did, did, did enough to get a win. But Calasimo, since he's been back in and getting the starting job, he's been excellent. He's going to pitch it out to the left side. On the run is Arius Hilliard, and he's going to score. Nobody there to get him a 59-yard touchdown run. Uh, there is a flag on the field. I'm assuming it was after the play, so it probably won't be coming back. But this is what is so dangerous about this offense. As we're talking about, they play a variation of the triple option. Some people would call it kind of like a wing T. This is something you d you don't prep for in summer camp. We'll wait for the call. Sideline warning, Davidson. I assume that's going to be that's going to ensue on the kickoff. But like in fall camp, you don't practice the triple option on defense. When you're going through the season, Rarely, yeah. you, you don't practice the triple option on defense. You only practice it on the game week. Every guy has an assignment. You have to account for each and every guy. You're playing man basically the whole game. And if one guy misses an assignment, it's a touchdown. Right. And that's – As we just saw. As, as, as we just saw. And it, and it was very well done by the quarterback waiting to pitch the ball until the last minute. And this is one of the worst feelings to have as a kicker, something that is usually so easy and still should be relatively easy. You go from nice and easy, 20 yard little chip shot to now you're at a 25 and for some reason that five yards makes all the difference in your head. Makes you think a little bit. Really, it doesn't feel like routine, even when you're that far back? No. Or a little bit At least back. for me, it didn't. Panofsky will boot this one through. So it was once 7-0 about a minute ago. Davidson strikes quickly. We thought they'd be a little more methodical, but they're wasting no time. And that's why you want to keep them off the field because they can score so quickly. You want to reduce their number of possessions. They scored in less than a minute. It was 525 when they got the ball. We now have 433 left. So you want to keep them on the sideline. You want to waste that clock the more the, because it seems like every time they get the ball, they're, 
they're probably going to score or at least get very close. And if they don't score, then they're going to waste a lot of time because they're only really running the ball. You ha Again, you have to keep them on the sideline, and you have to give your defense a rest because they are playing man the whole game. They have to follow their guy everywhere he goes. So they are going to be tired after every possession. Maybe not that one because it was a little quick, but you got to give them a breather. Two plays, 62 yards. Quick hitting for Davidson. You're right. I mean, you have to give your defense a breather, too. I mean, they're happy. Their defense has to be happy the offense scored, but at the same time, it's like, guys, we just got done with the 20-play drive, and you guys did a 12 for that. Yeah, it's, it's a two-way street, and even if you don't score on this drive, it, if you're the Bulldogs, you want to waste that clock. Can we get into the second quarter before Davidson gets the ball back? Joey Audia and A.J. Dinehart will be back deep for Bonofsky's kick. Audia is going to catch this one off the bounce. Audia. Audia spun out and hit hard. Brought down at the 23-yard line, and that's where Butler will start their drive. 16-yard return on that one. Connor Norwood on the stop. And can the Bulldogs continue to do what we saw last time? We saw four sprint outs on that last drive by Bushka, something we haven't seen a lot of. Can you keep him moving? Because we know he is very dangerous when he runs the ball so far this season. He has had 37 rushes for 192 yards. The guy can get it done on the ground. Get him out of the pocket. Let him see the field. And if he has nothing, let him pick up four or five yards, slide. Please don't take a hit that you don't need to, especially coming off of a shoulder injury. But just keep eating up yards. Deep ball. Flag on the field. Intended for Thomas Brown. This will be pass interference. Just Brown's second target on the season, and he's had one ball overthrown, and then he gets a, draws a PI penalty. I think that might have been one of the easiest pass interference calls. It looked like he was boxing out the receiver there, not letting him get anywhere close to the ball, not trying to play the ball. Quentin James on the coverage and the culprit on that one. And if there is one flaw you can point out with this really good Davidson Wildcat team is averaging 72 penalty yards a game. I mean, that's seven first that downs. You. Yeah, I mean, that's a huge deal. So, and Butler coming in averaging 42. The more mistakes you make, the more opportunities you give the other team to take advantage. Bunch set for Bushka. From the 38-yard line, Dinehart. He'll be wrapped up after a four-yard gain. Stopped by Ryan Moog. Excuse me, Aaron Warren on the stop. Strong eye from the pistol. Schwantz in there at fullback. Deinhart up the middle. Man, he ran into Purley. He'll be short of the first down, but a good run for A.J. We've said it once. We've said it twice. We'll probably say it over 100 times. Run the ball. You are very capable of doing that, especially throwing Schwanz back there to lead block for him. Something, again, we haven't seen. We are throwing new things at this Davidson defense. Keep changing it up, and your ground game is doing great. Commit to it. Another item to pay attention to, Jack Turner is lined up at tight end. He's a backup right guard. Get a little extra beef to run the football. Deinhardt spins out of one tackle. Deinhardt got some space. Deinhardt, no one's going to catch A.J. Touchdown. 53 yards to the house. And what did we just talk about? Run the, the man the ball. Give him the ball. 
let him run. And something you saw there, they were heavy set to the right. They brought in the backup right guard. They put another tight end in the backfield showing, hey, we're going to run it to the strong side. And boom, A.J. ran to the left side of the center, broke a couple tackles, and scores six points. His longest rush on the year and longest touchdown. It's also his first touchdown of the season. Butler leads 14-7. Near the end of the first quarter, just three to go here. That was a three-play drive, 77 yards. And this is the Butler team that we have expected to see. We've seen little glimpses of it, like when they played San Diego two weeks ago and they were tied 14 to 14 and a half. They have the ability to compete with some of the best teams in this conference, but they haven't really been able to put it all together. So far to start, they have, granted they gave up a, qu a very quick touchdown on defense, but with an offense like this, only having four or five days to prepare, that can be expected. You're gonna make early mistakes in the game. It's can you fix it? and you really can't ask for a better start. 2.56 left here. We scored quick on that one, uh, but having the 14-7 lead as the defense, I think you would take a little bit less of a breather to be able to go out and play with a touchdown lead. And why not, too? I mean, now you get a chance on defense to answer and capitalize on the momentum that your offense provided. Zurich got a kick. Oakley. And Mione on to return. Mione's going to get this one back at the four-yard line. Mione lowers the shoulder, but Kellen Madison with a nice stick. Knock him out of bounds. Well, other scores so far in the PFL. At halftime, Moorhead State leads Maris 13-10. to Valparaiso leads Dayton 7-3 to at the end of the first quarter. And San Diego leads Presbyterian with three minutes and change in the first quarter later today. Well, actually, looks like Stetson and Drake got canceled. Not quite sure why. So let's see Davidson's offense once again and Butler's defense. Last week, and we didn't even mention it. I can't believe we went this whole time without mentioning it. Four interceptions in the first half. Four interceptions in the defense. first half, but no points scored off those interceptions. That's you right. have to take advantage of those mistakes. At least for the defense, eight interceptions this year has been a bright spot. Up the middle, that's Coy Williams. He'll gain three yards. Yeah, their interceptions lead the FCS and rank six. I'm sorry, rank 16th in the FCS and lead the PFL with eight interceptions. We had an interception in three straight games to open the season. Then you go with no turnovers versus Drake and San Diego, and you get four against Moorhead. Colosimo changing the play at the line. Wing T formation. He'll keep and then pitch out. Tripped up. Nice tackle by Connor Reed, who really, for all intents and purposes, was the MVP last week. Mark McCurdy on the rush there. Able to fight off a blocker and make the play, saying, we are not going to let you score like that again. He's going to have to have a big game on the defensive side for the Dogs if they want to stay in this game. Colosimo pitches out to Williams. Williams has some room on the right side, and he'll get a first down for the Wildcats. Colosimo pitches it to 27, Coy Williams. 14-yard gain on that one. Something to watch out for, too, as this game progresses is number eight, Devin Aguilar, out on an island, guarding the only receiver they really play with in most of their formations. Eventually, there will be a pass, and he's going to have to stay awake all game and just wait for maybe those two, three, four passes that come his way. Fake to Williams. Trying to pop over the top. It's caught. Jalen Staples. On the crossing pattern. Spoken into existence. <laughs> you did. 
a 30 broadcaster jinx there. A 37-yard pickup by the Wildcats. Again, you, you always have to be ready for that. And he did have some help over the top. First and 10 from the 26-yard line of Butler. 27-yard gain on that one. Pitch out. This is McCurdy. McCurdy. Initially hit by Bafia. No one could bring him down. He's actually going to lean forward, or backward rather, for a first down, an 18-yard gain. It looks like that'll take us into the second quarter. It sure will. Bulldogs lead 14-7 at the end of the first. Thank you for being with us. You're watching Butler football on the Butler Athletics YouTube page. Don't go anywhere. Please watch. Please watch and enjoy the dance team performance. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome the Butler dance team. <laughs> Welcome back to the Bud and Jackie Selleck Bowl. Joey Lindstrom alongside Drew Bevelheimer. It is the second quarter beginning, and Davidson is driving. They're within the 10-yard line of the Bulldogs at the 7. After some great gains, one big play for 27 yards to Jalen Staples, and then Mark McCurdy taking it for 19 yards down to the 7. So far, this drive five plays so far drew and it looks like davidson has not batting an eye it's when butler scores they seem to want to answer immediately and usually when you see a triple option offense a, a wing t look you look at like navy uh and teams like that and they they don't get big chunk plays usually they usually get three four yards a carry eat a lot of clock this davidson team can do that but what they can also do is get those those huge plays, like those 20, 30, 40 yards plays and score in a hurry, and that's what we're seeing so far. Well, Davidson's one yard away from 100 yards rushing already after the first quarter. Butler with 77 yards rushing and 51 through the air. Davidson with 27 through the air and 101. Davidson one for one, for one on third down, and Butler five of seven on third down. So here we go. Colosimo's got the Cats ready for first and goal. Everybody packing in tight. One safety high look for Butler. Pitch out. Left side, that's Oakley. Oakley lowers the shoulder. And he's got a touchdown for the Wildcats. And the Wildcat faithful are roaring, Drew. Yes, they are. 
letting us know they're here. A pretty good crowd for having to travel, what, nine hours? Yeah. Bonofsky on a kick. That drive, six plays, 72 yards. Oakley finishing that one off on the pitch. Well, Davidson and Butler keeping pace with each other thus far. That one's good and ties it up at 14. And I think one of the most revealing stats so far is their time of possession. Butler with 11 minutes, right around 11 minutes of possession. And Davidson right around four. Usually Davidson has the ball for 32 minutes a game. You've already cut that down because that would go out to around eight minutes a quarter if we're doing some quick mental math. You cut that in half already for that quarter. Keep them off the field. They can score quick. There's no like, there's no doubt about it. They will probably match you toe-to-toe. -to -toe. But can you keep them off the field? Can you let your defense rest like we've talked about? And can you move the ball efficiently, eat up the clock, and keep scoring? What you can't do is you can't go three and out. And you definitely like need, need to get points on the board on almost every possession because this offense does not show signs of stopping anytime soon. Frankly, neither does does Butler either. They haven't been contended, really. Again, uh, this Davidson defense hasn't been able to answer, especially when it comes to third downs. Five of seven is pretty striking. And Butler went for it twice on fourth down on their first drive. Going back to setting the tone, you got to think starting 0-4, having some games, if we just call it what it is, embarrassing losses, losing by over 30 points, in a couple games, enough is enough, right? I mean, you, you want to go out and show we can play. We deserve to be here. We deserve to play with the best teams in the conference, and that's what they're showing us so far. Short kick. Audia is going to take this one at the 13. Audia, right side, lowering the shoulder. Another great return by Joey Audia. Again, getting that first first down, a 21-yard return by Audia. Setting up your offense nicely. Again, taking that pressure off, saying, I'm going to give you a little bit more room to work with. And it just it just lets you kind of relax. Be, oh, okay. We already got, we're already 15 yards away from getting in to plus territory. Let's see what we can do on offense. Drive will start at the 34-yard line. Bushka, two tight ends set. Fakes to Benefield. Lofts it to O'Shea. What a catch, but he's out of bounds. That'll be incomplete. And a good call there. It was close, but it looked he was trying to drag those feet as slow as he could out of bounds. Just unlucky. The ball very well thrown. Only put where his receiver could get it, unfortunately, just a little bit out of bounds. Well, it'll bring up second down and 10. Second down and 10 for Butler at the 34-yard line. Flogger in motion. Bushka zips it to Yogi. Tries to make an open field move, and he is brought down by a cackle of Wildcats. Right, cackle? I think you're right. Gaggle of geese. A cackle of cats. A kaleidoscope of flamingos. Cackle kittens. Sounds about right to me. One thing he noticed there, too, it looked like he had a lot of space after he caught the ball. They get the Davidson defense flies around. They're able to close up space so quickly. And now it looks like a definite passing situation for the dogs. Third down and seven from their own 37. Bushka, sprint out. Looking for Flogger. Nobody open. Whips it to Brown, and that'll fall incomplete. Bring up fourth down. Unfortunately, that's kind of what exactly what you don't want to have coming out of coming into the start of the second quarter is a quick three and out and giving them the ball back. Looked like they had a first down there again, just slipping through his hands. Bushka's been putting the ball on the money. A couple drops here early to start the game. Hopefully, as the game progresses those will start to go away. But again, you're seeing you can still move the ball. I mean, they had opportunities, but now the defense has to show up and get the ball back. Zurich, 39-yard punt average. This one a boomer. And it'll trickle out of bounds. 
Call it the 15 yard line and that's where the Wildcats will start their drive. Right around a 48 yard punt there. Rolls out of bounds, no return. Even if there, were, even if there was a returner there, looks like he wouldn't have had a shot. And we know that in a close game like this, special teams can be the difference. Flipping the field 48 yards, making them start on their own 15. That's a huge advantage to have. Great work to flip the field by the Bulldogs. See Davidson once again. Colosimo hands off to Sparks. He'll be brought down by Mac Menard after a five yard gain. Called six. O'Connor Reed leads the team in tackles. He's an excellent addition to this team coming in the spring. 43 tackles coming into this one. Handoff, Sparks. Bradley McGee finishing him off, but initial hit by Eloa Bigiramana. Dylan Sparks on the carry again for Davidson. This will bring up third down and one. And it is a short one at that. Looks closer to about a foot, but you got to do your best to get off the field here. The, the Bulldog defense so far this year is allowing 45% conversion on third down. Hit by Malachi Pike, but Sparks spins out and leans over for a first down. Dylan Sparks on the carry for Davidson, tackled by Malachi Pike. Three yard gain results in Malachi Pike, a guy not afraid to get in the mix and throw his body around. Also Lane. had interception last week, one of the four. He returned that for 43 yards. First down, Davidson. Colosimo is going to keep it himself, but he's hit. Colosimo Nick Bafia on the stop. And a great open field tackle. And Connor Reed there staying with his guy, not allowing the pitch, making Colosimo have to keep the ball. Second and long. It looks like the Bulldog defense is slowly getting adjusted live time and making some adjustments, making it harder for this Wildcat offense to move the ball. Colosimo with 27 rushes coming into this game, 195 yards on the ground. It's all of one on that one. Pitches out to Sparks. Sparks shook off a couple tacklers. and He'll be pushed out. Short of the first down marker. It'll bring up third down and, and just a little bit to go. Connor Reed and Big Ramana, the two leading tacklers, on the stop there. Looked like there might have been a block in the back there. Something to keep your eye on as this game progresses because every play they run is so dependent on basically nine guys having a block every play. You're sure to make some mistakes in there. It'll be interesting to see how often it gets called. Third down, up the middle, Coy Williams will get the first down a little bit more, kind of read on the tackle. Coy Williams rushes for a Davidson first down. Brought down by five. Eight yard Connor gain, Reed. they just needed one. First and 10 for the Wildcats at the 44 yard line. And Davidson pinned inside their own 20 to start this drive. But two big third down conversions. Somebody did jump early, I think. And that'll be the case. False start on the Cats. Well, since Scott Abel came to Davidson in 2018, they have not had a losing season yet. Their win over Butler in 2018. Gave Davidson its first winning season since 2007. And they stopped the dogs. Four plays inside, four plays in a row inside the three yard line in the final minute. First 
I still have Last nightmares. Last in 2019, yeah, still got bad memories. <laughs> Great game, though. Reverse. Waddell. Stopped by Connor Reed. Luckily for the Bulldogs, that didn't go as far as maybe they, as maybe Davidson intended on a little bit of trickeration. Good job staying home by the defensive backs. And Devin Aguilar nipping at his heels the whole way. Thought he was going to bring him down. Unlucky, but again, the Bulldog defense starting to really hold on those assignments. Not giving up a lot of big plays. Colosimo and the Cats have a second down and eight. Fake to Coy Williams. Colosimo's brought down hard by Gabe Hicks. One thing that this Davidson offense is not afraid to do is go for it on fourth down. Currently, 77% conversion rate. So if they get four or five yards here, they may stay on the field. Regardless, Butler needs to stop here. Two great defensive plays there. Two receivers split out wide. Third down and nine. Colosimo pitching out left side. That's Eli Turner. Turner will be brought down short of the first down marker. And looks like he's shaken up on the play. Eli Turner on the carry for Davidson. I like that pitch play. Nick Boffey on the stop. For Nick Boffey on the stop, and I think... You're right, Drew. Fourth down. You said 77%. They probably like their odds. Butler's going to have to step up here. It's tied halfway through the second quarter. And that's what makes this offense so hard to cover is you've seen them on a dive play get eight yards. You've seen them go out wide for 62 yards and a touchdown. Everything is open right now. Looks like they're going to go with a dive and get another chunk of three or four yards there for the first down. Coy Williams. Ever reliable. He had three touchdowns last week. He leads the PFL in points scored and touchdowns. He's got nine on the year. A key first down there for number 27. Pitch out, Turner, brought down by Mike Dunn. Great play from the big fella. And now you're seeing the other side of this Davidson Wildcat offense taking over six minutes off the clock right now. You've seen him score quick twice. Now you're seeing him eat up that clock. The Bulldogs are going to have to get off the field here if you want your offense to have another chance at scoring before the end of the half. Well, not only that, they've also been really good on first and second down, only stopping them for, only halting Davidson for just a couple yards gain each time. I think there might be some movement up front and a false start on the Wildcats. A trend we have seen so far throughout this season is the opposing offense will make a mistake. They'll get a five or ten yard penalty, but then they're able to overcome it so quickly. Can the Butler defense here make them pay for this mistake, keep them in second and long, make it third and long, and then make them have to think about a punt because this is not a team that punts a lot. Definitely need to stop here, capitalize on that penalty. That's Davidson's third false start on the day. And it'll be interesting to see here if they go to a pass. Colosimo on the year is 21 to 32 for 335 yards, five touchdowns, two interceptions. He'll pitch out. Right side, that's Aris Hilliard. Had the touchdown earlier. The speedster bowls down a defender, and he'll be pushed out of bounds. Three, Aris Hilliard with the carry for Davidson. 
Boy, th- Harris Hilliard with a 59-yard touchdown earlier, 34-yard run here. Again, able to overcome that penalty on one play and some, getting well into the red zone. Colosimo looking to the sideline. Now in the red zone, very efficient is Davidson. Hand off, Coy Williams. Lowers the shoulder, spins out of the tackle, and falls down inside the five. Saw a mouth guard fly there. These guys are running hard and hitting hard. Kozlowski on the stop. Davidson almost has 200 yards rushing. Coy Williams, nothing but room to get himself to the end zone. Touchdown, Wildcats. Three-yard touchdown, 14 plays, 85 yards on that drive, their longest to date so far in the game. Last week they scored 10 touchdowns. As this one goes up, Banofsky knocks it through. Seven of those touchdowns came from plays longer than 26 yards. That one they just punched in, but we've already seen the studded attack of this Davidson offense. And you just have to be able to take advantage of those mistakes. Two penalties on that drive for Davidson and no consequence. Able to overcome both of those penalties, drive down and score. 518 left here. The Bulldog offense does have time to go down and score, but coming out of the half, the prolific Wildcat offense will get the ball back. So you really need to go down here and get some points on the board, whether that's a field goal or a touchdown. You want to keep it close, especially going into the half. You certainly have to get, at this point, 518. I got to imagine they want to not milk the clock, but you want to take your time getting on the field. Get your, get your burst plays in there. Yeah, we you also didn't see a whole lot of running on the last drive. We did not see a whole lot of running on that last drive. Maybe you open up the drive here, start on the ground, see if you get that four or five yards, let the clock run, because the last thing you want to do is give this Davidson offense three minutes left, two and a half minutes left to go down and score, because they've shown they can score quickly, go into the half with a two-touchdown lead, and then get the ball back to start the third quarter. It could make the look of this game flip very quickly from what is a very close game to an ugly score very quickly. So Audia and Deinhardt back deep to return. 518 left to play in the second quarter. Thanks for being with us here for this PFL matchup. Banofsky boots it. Audio will take it at the nine. Moving over the middle, Audio looking for some room. Breaks a tackle and he'll be brought down by number 39, Daniel Carter. And the dogs will get started at the 28 yard line. He's been impressive ever since. They didn't have him back there uh, prior to last week, and he's been quite a, quite a significant difference in the kick return game. And again, another solid return, and what that allows you to do, as we saw on the last drive, he got him out to about the 35, a 48-yard punt. Now they're on the 15. He doesn't get those initial yards. Now you're looking at like the 25-26. Having that big return to start can change field position. And off to Benefield. Good push. On the outside, Benefield will gain about eight yards. Jack Turner brought in as the tight end for the heavy set package. Working his butt off, blocking. And there's a def- defender for Davidson down on the field. 
And the Bulldogs do have some injuries up front. Ben Treese out for the year, moving Gavin Johnson out to a tackle position. But Colton Ruland, Grant Purley, Trevor Scott, Brian Beistel, these guys are stepping up, and you ha and you still have your veteran leadership. Even your backups have a lot of experience. Trust them. Run the ball. Let them run behind them. I mean, we just saw their eight-yard gain. We saw A.J. Dinehart bust out a big run and score a touchdown. This offensive line will let you run. Keep taking advantage of it. Well, for a while they were averaging 220 yards a game rushing the ball. Now that average has gone down a bit, just but still 190 yards per game running the football is substantial, and they've been able to do it because of this offensive line. Butch formation to Bushka's right. Benefield, left side, and he'll run out of bounds after a seven yard gain. The only thing that might have made that a little better, oh, the clock is still running. I thought he got out of bounds as well. I don't think it should be running if, if he went out of bounds, but regardless, and you get the first down stoppage. Regardless, play clock does keep running. Bushka. Draw. Bushka. Hard running. First down, Bulldogs. 17 yards for the quarterback. Jake Alexander on the stop. Need plays like that to keep drives moving. Nothing really much else to say except things we've said before. Trust your offensive line. Keep the ball on the ground. Keep getting 8, 9, 10 yards of carry until they can stop it. Such of it's in motion. Bushka, hand off to Benefield. Benefield will get pinballed around, but he'll gain five yards. Draylon Hines on the stop. Draylon Hines, a very impressive player off the field as well. Talk about him after this play. Bushka and the Bulldogs have second down and five. He'll drop back. Hits Nate Walker on the spot route. Walker's got a first down and more. Brought down at the 17-yard line. And that is what being able to run the ball does, a 16-yard gain on that pass play. They get so concerned about the run, they're going to start stacking the box, and then it's going to open up those passing lanes, as you saw right there. This Bulldog offense functioning very efficiently and get, being able to get big chunks of yards so far on this drive. A look to the sideline. You're right, they just look more calm, more like this, this is something that they've been facilitating in their, their efforts. Fake pitch, Bushka. Keeps it himself after faking out Tyler Solomon. Almost made him jump out of his shoes there, <laughs> giving him a taste of their own medicine. Quick hit about Draylon Hines, the defensive back for Davidson. Spent a summer at LSU Health as a biomedical research fellow, studying the regulation of macrophage function and its contribution to disease pathogenesis. Impressive, impressive scholar, student athlete. Benefield lowers the shoulder, gains a few more yards, and he'll be one yard shy of first down, and he'll bring up third. And that, again, is what is so dangerous about this Butler offense. You have three guys, four with Nick Orlando, who we are yet to see here, that can run the ball very well. You have it in your quarterback, and you have A.J. Dinehart, and then that's followed up by Michael Benefield. There's really no stop to this running attack of Butler. Davidson normally giving up 138 yards per game on the ground. Giving up 124 so far. Benefield 
will walk himself into the end zone. Touchdown, Butler. Again, not really a lot to say. Run the ball. Run the ball, and good things will happen. We saw it again on that drive. Two touchdowns now. Big run, followed by big run, by a little pass here and there, and drained over two minutes off the clock, only giving the Davidson offense one minute. And now if you're the defense, you can let them gain some yards. And the extra point is good. You can let them gain some yards, but you just can't break, right? It's like the bend but don't break. You can bend a little bit. You can let them... To get to the 50, the 40, just don't let them score in a minute. They're going to get the ball out. You don't want to give them the opportunity to, to score two touchdowns. Just stop them. You don't have to make them punt. Just keep them from scoring. A minute, six seconds seems like not that much time. But for this Davidson squad, we've seen a couple drives already where they can hit you quick. Butler has to stay home defensively, I have to imagine. And we'll that, see. That scoring drive, go ahead. No, no, you go. Okay, scoring drive, eight plays, 72 yards, four minutes elapsed. We said at the beginning of the drive they have to not knock the clock down, but you'll take the points, obviously. Tied up. Now it's up to your defense to go into the half with some momentum. And what I was going to say is now we'll see this Davidson offense. Only one pass so far. They kind of lull you to sleep because you have to be so ready for that wing tee. Are they going to pitch it? Are they going to do a dive to where you can kind of fall asleep as the corner can they take advantage of that? you got to think they're going to go to the air at least one time with a minute left. Uh, try to get 30, 40 yards quick. Zurich boots this one deep. Fielded by Mione. He'll take it to the middle. Mione spun out, and he'll be dragged down at the 30-yard line. A little bit of extracurricular at the end there. A 20-yard return there for Davidson, giving themselves, again, better field position than a touchback or a fair catch, a little extracurricular activity after the play. But now you just got to just gotta keep slowing them down. Let them run because it will drain the clock. They still have all of their timeouts, but just can't give up those big plays in this final 59 seconds. No, you can't. 59 to go. 70 yards to go for Davidson. Colosimo will be the lone offensive player in the backfield. He'll drop back. Deep ball. Left side. Through the hands of Jaden Waddell. Davidson was trying to get a big chunk play. There was no second guessing that pass all the way. Had his guy, like you said, just through his hands. It'll be interesting to see if they go back to trying to put the ball on the ground and give it to the hands of one of the many guys who can tear up the field. Taking with the ball so far, yep. Or will they continue to stay in the air? It looks like an empty backfield. He'll hand it to Eli Turner, and he'll be brought down after a five-yard gain. Davidson has had seven different rushers carry the football. And that'll be a timeout for the Wildcats prior to this third down. Well, this defense playing hard thus far, despite Davidson being a power, and we knew they were going to come in playing like this. Last week, Butler showed a dilapidated effort on the passing front, and the last time they, they only netted 41 yards passing last week. The last time Butler had anything fewer was homecoming two seasons ago 
2019, Butler had three yards passing, but they only attempted to throw the ball twice because it was a rainy, torrential downpour against Jacksonville. Ran the ball 55 times. Colosimo drops back. Hits his quick out receiver, Eli Turner, who will trot out of bounds. 41 seconds to go. First down for the Cats. A 13-yard pitch and catch right there. This is in the territory where you got to start to buckle down a little bit on defense. Can't give them too many more yards because then with 41 seconds and two timeouts, it'll start to open up their playbook again, make them be able to go back to really just running all of their stuff through the wing tee. Right now they are kind of having to pass to get those – chunk yardage plays, the closer they get, the more they'll be able to go back to their bread and butter. Colosimo, another deep shot. Almost had his man, Jalen Staples, again. Good, def good defense there by Devin Aguilar. And I'll bring up third down and 10. The passes have seemed to be really good. It just seems like they've been going through the hands of the receivers, which you can kind of expect in a mostly run offense. You probably don't practice all, all the catching as much, especially when you get even in – you're probably doing like your individuals, but then when you get to the team periods, you're probably usually working on your blocking or you're getting the ball handed off to you. Beg your pardon, second down. Colosimo's going to go deep again. He's got McCurdy on the wheel route. Down at the 25-yard line, a 27-yard strike. Uh, and again, I spoke too soon. A great catch <laughs> there well, made. But still, only one for three so far on this drive with and, and those other two balls very catchable. Well, what you say is true. I mean, they're, they're last in the PFL in passing because they run the football so much. Only 466 yards before coming into this game. And so far today, they have 67 through the air. You just don't get as many live reps in the game, which is totally right. different from practice. You're not used to a guy full speed on your back trying to break up the pass. It's just, it's just totally different. So you can kind of expect some of those passes to fall incomplete even when they're on the money. Well, since Scott Abel came here to Davidson in 2018, that first season, they had a winning season, but it wasn't, they weren't remarkable in any sense. But then the following year in 2019, they ranked among the top FCS programs nationally in rushing. They were second. Total defense, they were fourth, and they led the nation in third down percentage. And finally last year, reaping that reward in the spring, uh, defeating San Diego to win the PFL. Yeah, like a worst-to-first story right there. They right. finished last in the PFL, and then a few seasons later, they won it. And he has been able to turn this program around, brought in his guys. They're now seniors, and you're seeing just how good they are when he yeah. is able to run his offense and what he wants the team to be. And when you're a freshman coming in with a new coach, start to learn his system, and now by now, your senior year, I feel like this is the this is the type of journey you're supposed to be on. Pitch out to Turner. Right side, he'll get knocked out of bounds by Bigger Amana. Flag on the field. Curious if that might be a late hit. I I don't know. by Bigger Amana, flag on the field. 24 seconds to go. Jordan Castleberry holding his hands up. Didn't think he should have a late hit called. But if it is, that's going to put them into the first and goal range. Could possibly be holding here, too. Well, there you go. Re referees have made a concerted effort over the past couple of years to really emphasize not trying to cut at, your, at the knees or what have you. It has to be within the box meaning the, the space where the offensive line and the defensive line meet. Can't do it outside of that area, and I think that's what happened there, blocking below the waist. 
and with this type of offense, you're going to see a lot of those types of blocks. So it's bound to happen at some point now. Here we are again, first and 20. And they, yep, yep they just corrected it. First and 20. They made a huge mistake here with 24 seconds left. You have to make them pay. You cannot let them score. Definitely a touchdown, but hopefully not a field goal as well. Colosimo drops back, airs it out. He's got McCurdy wide open, and McCurdy's going to score. Touchdown, Wildcats. Hey. 35 yards through the air. Again, just able to overcome those mistakes with no consequences. It seems like every time they've had a penalty, the following play, they've either gotten the yardage back that they, that they lost or they've had a big play. And that's exactly what you didn't want to happen if you were Butler. Giving up a score at the end of the first half and you're not getting the ball back to start the second. Bonofsky on to kick once again. That scoring drive, seven plays, 70 yards, 42 seconds. And we kind of said it, a minute, six seconds is a little too much time against this Davidson offense as Bonofsky knocks it through. Kick is good with 17 seconds remaining in the first half. Well, 17 seconds to go here, Drew. Butler, 21. If you're Coach Voris, probably just want to head to the locker room, right? I would Reset. imagine that is what they're going to do is they're going to head to the locker room. What I would like to see, because this team is going to score. Like, you're not, you're not going to shut this team out in a quarter, probably in a half. I mean, this is an offense built to score and built to run the clock out. So the number of times you have the ball is going to be limited. You've been successful so far scoring on three of your drives, having to punt on one. Maybe take a shot. Just see what happens. What's They have one timeout left. So if you take a shot, you don't get it. That's okay because they can't stop you on three straight plays. You can eventually take a knee. With, take a shot. See what happens. And if you don't score, you don't score. But have everything go more towards the sideline. You tell your quarterback, either throw it to the guy or throw it out of bounds where nobody can get it. And you just see what happens. Why not take a shot? Because the number of times you're going to have to score, they're going to come out in this half so far successful on all four drives. Nothing has slowed them down, whether it's a 15-yard penalty, a 10-yard penalty. They are able to overcome everything. You have to, t you have to try every time you get the ball because you don't know when the next – because the next time you may get the ball, you may be down 14 points. They have to, have to come out and stop the Wildcats if they want a chance to even the score. This one will be fielded by Suchi. And he'll be brought down past the 35, call it the 36-yard line. Well, that's Colosimo's sixth touchdown pass on the season. And Mark McCurdy's second receiving touchdown. He's also got two rushing on the year. And that helps that play helped Davidson get over 100 yards passing on the day. Now I'd like to say what I think is going to happen is we're going to take a knee. But I maybe not. Bushka is lined up in shotgun, unless he wants to take a four-yard loss, or five. There's 12 seconds left. Handoff is to Suchi. He'll be brought down at the line of scrimmage, but move forward for a couple more. And they're going to take that in the half, uh, essentially the same as in knee, seeing if you can maybe break one. What? You've shown you can throw on this team, too. What? You kind of want to see him take a shot, because you were in the same position a couple weeks ago against San Diego who tied 14 to 14 at the half you come out of half they score 38 unanswered points end up winning that game huge 52 to 21 I don't know you, you, you gotta get a stop in, at, at the beginning of the second half you really do Butler and Davidson a scoring affair absolute shootout right now but the Cats lead the dogs 28 to 21 at the end of the first half Please stick around to watch the performance from our Butler Marching Band. You're watching Butler Football on the Butler Athletics YouTube page.
possessions are located inside Hinkle Fieldhouse. performing that tune, Born This Way.
and is under the direction of Melissa Johnson. The drum line instructor is Mike Kehoe, and the guitar line instructor is Melissa Butler Athletics, I'm Chuck Levine. Heading into this week's matchup against Davidson, we wanted to take a break from the action and give you a look into the arts here at Butler University. We sat down with senior performance major Camille Ringenberg to talk about her upcoming recital and reflect on her time here at Butler. We discussed the process she's been through since the end of her junior year, listening to an expansive list of songs in the car on long drives with her boyfriend and narrowing down what it is she really wants to play. Camille also gave us a snapshot into what her week has looked like heading into her big performance this weekend. But um, senior asylum is much more free, so you really get to pick exactly what you want for your rep without guidelines. Um, so I just kind of got to pick pieces that I've always wanted to play, which was really cool. And yesterday we had my dress rehearsal in the hall, which was really fun. And it's an exciting process. It's cool watching it all come together, especially like the week of is just like you're just doing really minor things in the music, which is so fun because you really just get to perfect it and make it totally your own and put your own mark on it. For her recital, Ringenberg will be performing Winter Spirits by Katherine Hoover, Nocturne by George Barrer, Oran S. Kane by Sarah Bassingthwaite, and Fantasy Pastorale Hungaries, OP number 26 by Franz Doppler. Her performance will be here at the Eidson Duckwall Recital Hall this Saturday at 2 p.m. For Butler Athletics, I'm Chuck Levine. The Butler Collegian is starting a bi-weekly student-run newscast that will take place here in the CECOM studio. This year when I came back and I knew that COVID was going to be less of an issue, I proposed it to our editor-in-chief and I said I think this is something that we should start back up again, not just because it's fun, but it's because it's super helpful for everybody to just get more experience in the studio. And as editor, I feel like it's kind of my job to direct the whole thing and um, most of my studio experience is sort of on camera, so I'm definitely myself learning a lot of um, technological things that I um, am having to pick up, but I guess it's good for everybody else too. I know we have mostly CECOM majors in multimedia, but there's a couple of non-CECOM majors, so it's yeah, definitely it's useful for everybody, I think. I think it gives us good experience in an actual studio. It gives us experience doing all of the different roles, whether it be producing, directing, on camera, all of the different stuff, so you really get a taste of what you're going to want to do upon graduation. I'm so excited for the return of the newscast. I think it's a really good way to get news out to all the students and it keeps it entertaining to be able to have the news, sports, a little bit of an entertainment segment all wrapped into one. For anyone looking to get involved with the newscast, you can apply online on the Collegian website as a multimedia reporter. For Butler Sports 360, I'm Matthew Stein. Hello, my name is Evan Krause. I'm the handler of Butler Blue the Fourth. He's in the back seat. 
and we're out on the road because this is the last few days that you can vote for Butler Blue the fourth to join the mascot hall of fame. Awesome. And what does joining the mascot hall of fame mean for the live mascot program? For us, it really just uh, signifies the 21 years of history that we've had uh, really revolutionizing what it means to be a mascot. So we've taken the traditional sense of uh, a fun creature that sits on the sidelines during a basketball game and has turned turned them into a strategic university and community asset. So really the recognition of those efforts will be huge for us. And is it just Blue 4 that will be inducted if he gets voted into the Hall of Fame? No, that's the kind of the beautiful thing of it in, in comparison to the, the two-legged mascots as we like to call them. A live mascot program really encompasses many different mascots um, and many different uh, dogs in our sense. So, uh, We've had four live mascots. Butler Blue the first served from 2000 to 2004. Butler Blue the second served from 2004 to 2013. And then Chip, as we all know, served 2013 to 2020. And so it really would be a remarkable honor for all of these dogs to be memorialized in the Hall of Fame. I'm here with Jacob Broussard, uh, Butler student senior. Um, he's the coordinator of the Butler Dog Pound tailgate. So Jacob, um, how long have you been running this tailgate for? It's pretty cool. Yeah, so I took over as Dog Pound coordinator just last month, the start of the school year. And I've been loving it. I'm really glad that we get to plan a lot of stuff for the students this year. I know COVID put a damper for a lot of athletics, uh, a lot of happenings in athletics, and students haven't been able to do much to get involved. So I'm really glad we can put stuff together right now, be able to have students come out, have a good time, and have a fun time, get ready for a football game. Uh, what yeah. so far? What have you enjoyed the most? You know, running this tailgate and like this the dog pound experience. What is the most enjoyable part of it so far? I really like just getting to interact with more students, get to meet more people. I was obviously on my way out as a senior. Really happy I get to spend my last year trying to do some fun things with the students and plan to make every sure everyone has a good time. You mentioned that you're a marketing intern, so you kind of when we talked about before, you kind of said um, this was kind of um, it was start it was founded by the marketing uh like department right is that right yeah dog pound's been around for a while it was uh, founded by the marketing director but they she actually left this past year so us intern to step up in a big way especially with dog pound trying to plan everything make sure everyone's having a good time make sure giveaways are planned and students to really get involved that's awesome well it's great to see the students running this uh tailgate it's great that we're here in this setting right behind hank right in, right, right in front of hankel and everything well jacob thank you for your time all right thank you man Hello Bulldog fans, we are here at the South Bowl for Butler vs. Davidson and we caught up with some of the cheerleaders before the game to talk about their experience. It's like exciting coming out here like with my team and warming up our stunts and it's like just a fun thing to like do with everybody especially since you know COVID like we're all getting back to like normal and it's nice to see everybody. Oh it's so much more fun and energetic. I like when there wasn't a lot of fans it was like really hard to get like hype and like get the team hype, but now with like the fans, it's 
it's normal, it's fun. Yeah. It's, we're just looking forward to some dubs, you know? <laughs> uh, it's it's getting fun. Uh, basketball starting soon, so we're excited for that. It's a nice little transition from football to basketball, but um, we're looking forward to like doing more of our pyramids and stuff, because we can't do that in the gym. But out here we can throw a lot more skills because it's on the turf. Yeah. So we're excited for that. I'm here with Drew Ottage, um, the director of the athletic development. Um, so Drew, uh, I've been passing by here a lot lately. Um, it's it's pretty actually pretty cool. I've always been wondering what this is. So do you actually want to tell the viewers out there what this is and what uh, what the Bulldog Club Terrace is about? Absolutely. So on on Butler home football games, we host an area for all our our fans and donors that give at a certain level have access to a hospitality tent, and we offer complimentary soft drinks, water, chips, and popcorn and there's um, other beverages available to all our fans um, who give at a certain level to have hospitality before and during the football game. Yeah, so uh, you explained a little bit what it's about. Um, how long has this been running for? How, like, how many years has this been going on? How long have you ran this exactly? So I just started as the director of athletic development a month ago, and I believe that this has been happening for at least three to four seasons here on campus for all home football games. Um, we have this is our fourth game, and we have one more game left this season, and we're excited to to host our fans and and, and parents of student athletes here today. Good stuff like what what do you like the most about it? I think it's building relationships with our families and of of our and our donors, uh, especially families that are that are parents of student athletes, building relationships with them and able to uh, you know show them you know we th we're grateful for their support of Butler Athletics and of all our student athletes, whether they're in band dance, cheer, or any of our sports teams, we're excited to show them you know, that we're grateful for their support and we want them to come out and support, all, support their fans as well. Thank you. Well, thank you so much. I uh, appreciate your time and best of luck the rest of the year. Good. Welcome back to West 49th Street in the Bud and Jackie Selleck Bowl. Our halftime score, the Davidson Wildcats lead the Butler Bulldogs 28 to 21. I'm Joey Lindstrom alongside Drew Bevelheimer. So far at the half, the dogs have 136 yards rushing to Davidson's 212. Davidson also leads in the passing game, 102 yards to Butler's 70. Time of possession, Butler 16.51, Davidson 13 minutes and nine seconds. Third downs so far, Davidson is four of five, Butler is six of nine. Both teams are 100% on their fourth down conversions. And they're knotted up both with 12 first downs. Leading rusher for the Bulldogs, A.J. Dinehart with 60 yards, long 53. That was his touch long touchdown run. Arius Hilliard has 93 yards rushing for Davidson amongst eight other rushers. The Wildcat, the Wildcat offense has been very balanced so far. Drew, we talked about it at the end of the half. Davidson gets that score. 
with about uh, 16 seconds left or so to take the lead, 28-21. We said that Butler needed the stop to carry that momentum because they don't get the ball back in the, sec in the second half. They need to set the tone on defense. How did they do it? I think it boils down to two things mainly. One, you got to get a stop, right? I mean, that that is relatively easy to say, harder to do, but you got to get them off the field. But more important than that, stopping this offense, you're not going to do it a lot. The number of times you get them off the field before, before they score a touchdown is going to be few and far between. So when you do, you then have to score on offense. You, you, if they have to punt, you then have to go down and score. Again, easier to say than do, but get them off the field. And you know they're going to want to go for it on fourth down. Be ready to play every single down. Be ready for a fake. Be ready. Don't. And, and if they make that mistake on offense, they get a five-yard penalty if, on a false start or whatever it may be. Make them pay. We have not seen them do that yet in this game. Make them pay for the mistakes they make and see if you can tie this game up at 28. Back deep to return for Davidson, Aaron Mione, as well as Braden Oakley. Luka Zurich on to kick. Second half underway. Line drive right to Mione. He's going to take it on the left side. Mione. Big return, breaks a tackle. Kellen Madison hanging on his back to finally bring him down past the 40-yard line. Going to be incredible field position to start this half. A 37-yard return, probably not how you want it to come out into the third quarter. And already they're almost in four-down territory. Again, functioning right around 77%. Why, you're already at the 40. Why wouldn't you just go for it on fourth down already in this range if it's fourth and short? So Four drives. Four touchdowns for this Davidson offense. Three on the ground, one through the air. If you're Alicimo gonna was four for six, 102 yards passing. Sorry to cut you off, Drew. Hand off to Sparks. Sparks keeps the feet moving. He'll gain about six yards. Bring up second down. <laughs> what I was going to say is if you're going to even make them think about a punt, you have to keep them in third and long and then fourth and long already at second and medium. If this team is ever going to punt, they have to be six, seven, eight yards away on that fourth down. Leading the way so far for tackles, Connor Reed with four solo. Sparks again, penalty flag on the field. Could be another false start for Davidson. More than four in the backfield for Davidson. That is illegal formation. Second down and nine for the Cats. Handoff, Sparks. Carrying Bradley McGee and Bigger Amana down to the 47-yard line. It'll bring up third down and three. This is the stop that Butler needs. And we see it again, able to overcome that five-yard penalty on the next play. Keeping it himself is Colosimo. And he'll be pushed out of bounds. At the 28-yard line, 25-yard gain on third down. Well, you try to punch it up the middle a couple times. That's what you're going to get. You're, that's the beauty of the triple option if you're off, if you're – the offense running in is that you get enough times for this defense to bite. And then you can try to hit play action like that, but broken up by Bradley McGee. 
Great coverage there by Bradley McGee. Again, not being fooled, able to stay with his assignment the whole way mm. and get a little pass breakup in the stat sheet. Gerard, the intended receiver, the big tight end, has five receptions, four touchdowns this season. Looks but like there's a penalty flag. This could be... Well, Davidson already had a sideline warning in the first half, and for the penalty to happen even before anyone was set, you could assume that might be the case, but we'll see what it, head referee Kendall Christensen, excuse me, Mike Packard has for us. It so this penalty will actually be on Scott Abel. It appeared that he was uh, not happy about not getting a pass interference call. I'm sure he very politely told the ref <laughs> that he vehemently disagreed. Uh, and then, good word. Thank you. Uh, and then the referee uh, did not appreciate being told he was wrong and got a 15-yard penalty. And we'll say it again. Take advantage of their mistakes. Make them pay on a second and 25. Colosimo takes it himself. Colosimo breaks the tackle, and Bradley McGee will drag him down, and they'll get back past the original first down marker. Sixteen-yard rush, so they gain all their penalty yards back. And it almost seemed like we saw some of the Davidson players throwing their hands up, like they were pumped up that their coach was fighting for them. And they gain their yardage back. Sparks up the middle, brought down by Mac Menard at the first down marker. I think they'll give it to him. That's going to be first down for the Cats. Pretty much unfazed by the unsportsmanlike conduct penalty. And in two plays, they gain it all the way back. If anything, it invigorated them a little bit. They see their coach fighting for them. They say, oh, now look, we're going to go score for you. Don't You don't need to worry about that penalty. We got your back, too. And sure enough, in the red zone, first and 10 on the 17. Another red zone trip for the Wildcats. Colosimo pitches it. Turner wrapped up. Bradley McGee and Connor Reed on the stop. Tried to make a little move there on Connor Reed, and he said, no, sir, you are not going to beat me in the open field. Stayed with them every step of the way. Got a little help from Bradley McGee at the end. Good stop there. Second down and eight. From the 15, Colosimo pitches out. Breaking tackles and waltzing his way to the end zone. Harris Hilliard, but the ball's out. Flag on the field, and there was a fumble. I think he was across the line before he lost possession. Before he lost possession. Seemed like he may have wanted to celebrate a little bit because there was no need to jump. May make you think twice uh, about jumping into the end zone like that again. And it looks like it's going to come back anyway for a holding call on Davidson. I think that will be the case. It was going to be a 15-yard touchdown rush. A very long conference here by the referees. Let's see what Mike, Pack uh, Mike Packard has to say. So Malik McDaniel gets an unsportsmanlike penalty. It will force Davidson to retreat 15 yards on the kickoff, but the touchdown stands. Big momentum piece there for the Wildcats. 
to get a touchdown on their first drive of the second half. Banofsky will come on to kick. And he'll boot it through. Score is 35 to 21. That drive, eight plays, 60 yards, four minutes and nine seconds. Well, we thought with that unsportsmanlike penalty from Coach Scott Abel that drawing Davidson all the way back 15 yards was going to affect them. But story is the same. They have eight penalties, 80 yards. Butler has zero penalties. Played a very disciplined brand of football today. However... Every time Davidson has had a penalty, they've overcome it. And I think this penalty, if any of them will, will be the one that hurts them the most because you have seen this kickoff return of Butler consistently get out to the 30-35. Right. You, you attack on that 15 yards on the kickoff. You are now kicking off on your own 20. Now Butler can get almost into plus territory, maybe at least to the 50, if not past it. This could set the Butler offense up very nicely. It could. I mean, you have your pick your poison, right? Audi has done well today, averaging over 24 yards of return. A.J. Dinehart, equally as powerful a weapon when he's returning the football. Kick will be from the 20-yard line. And it's significant visually when you, when you look at it. A kickoff being retracted 15 yards. See that X at the 35. But Bonofsky's going to have to get all of this one. Does boot it deep. Audie's going to take it at the 19-yard line. Sneaking in, spinning off one tackle past the 40, down at the 41-yard line. A 23-yard return hanging right around his average. Didn't get to the 50, but still, ball will be spotted somewhere around the 40. It's not spotted yet. On the 41. And you're set up with great field position. Well, 10.43 to go. Bulldogs have plenty of time. Clearly the game plan is to stick with Bushkin quarterback. We haven't seen we haven't even called Nick Orlando's name yet today. Normally we see him in the two quarterback system. Bushka is out there. Split back. Incredibly with Austin Schwantz to his left. He'll lead block for the handoff for A.J. Dinehart. Dinehart out of bounds, keeping his feet moving. Past the Don Benbow 50-yard line, down at the 47, a 12-yard gain. Austin Schwantz, not usually your lead blocker. Able especially to out of the backfield. Especially out of the backfield, out of the backfield able to get out of there and make almost a perfect block, giving A.J. that lane. And again, run the ball. You have the guys around to make those blocks, keep using them, and keep eating up the clock and getting those first downs. Now such of it's in there at fullback. Fake handoff. Bushka steps up. Whips out to Flogger. That one is going to be underthrown and incomplete. Well, I think the idea was right there. He had an open man. Flogger was... Trying to go on the out route. Had good protection. Ball just a little short. And while the throw was a little short, almost perfectly placed, dropped it right over the head of a linebacker right in front of the man covering Flogger. Almost a perfect throw. Bushka zips it to Dinehart again underthrown. Brett's got to be kicking himself. That's third and ten. Let's see what Coach Connor has drawn up here for the dogs. Third down and ten for Butler. Big third down. Similarly to the San Diego game last time they were at home, they need a third down here. Bushka to Flogger. Wheel route, he's got him! Yogi Flogger is going to score! 
I think that's going to be called back, unfortunately, maybe. There are flags on the field. A Everywhere. 47-yard completion for that touchdown, but it, did he go out of bounds and come back in? Like, did he – because if you get shoved out of bounds – you can come back in, but if you intentionally run out of bounds to uh, to avoid the corner and come back in, you are not allowed to do that. And exactly where those flags are placed is where it would have happened. Right, you can't keep playing if you essentially get out of bounds and come back in. And judging by the collapse on the Davidson sideline, that could be it. Well, the flag is for illegal touching, and I think that is the same language that we're speaking. Yeah, it is That's illegal for you to touch the ball after you have gone out of bounds, which yep. is on under your own control. So what would be a touchdown is called back. A great pass, though, from Bushka to Flogger on the wheel route uh, for a drive that seemed rather bleak, but Zurich is now here to, to go ahead and put this one away. And if he could pin him deep, this would be ideal. Fair catch called for inside the 10 by Brian Jacobs. And Davidson will start their drive at the nine yard line. A 38 yard punt there by Luca. You do have to wonder, averaging 7.4 yards a carry so far this game, on first and second down, they're not even trying to run and get any positive yards, forcing you into a half to pass third down. The run so far has been working. I'm surprised to see them go away from it on yeah. two straight plays. Right. Well, the protection was good on both those plays. This veteran offensive line. Has done well, unfortunately, for the Dogs. They did not catch a break there. Flogger, illegal touching penalty. Forces third down, takes away their, uh, forces fourth down, takes away their touchdown. Colosimo and the Cats will start their drive at the nine. At uh, the ten, rather. Hand off, Coy Williams. I'll be brought down after a seven-yard gain by... Bradley McGee and Kozlowski. And if there was ever a time to get a stop on defense, it is right now. So far, five possessions, five touchdowns for the Davidson Wildcats. If you don't get them on the field here, it very quickly becomes a seven-point game going into halftime to a three-score game before the start of the fourth quarter. And off. Williams stopped immediately. Great work by the defensive front of Butler. Gabe Hicks and Austin Corba in on the stop. And Mac Menard finishing him off. You know, Mac Menard came in as a safety, dabbled in that defensive back position, and now playing linebacker. He's an essential portion of this linebacking core. Just able to show his versatility and how much he cares about the team, being willing to move around positions and find where he can help the team the most. Calasimo will hand off to Williams. Williams breaks a tackle and moves to the first down, Calisimo. past the first down line. Tackled by Lucas Kozlowski. And you would think that this is your last chance, really, to force a punt if you get him in, into a fourth down situation anything outside of this they'll probably continue to go for it on fourth down once they get right around that 40 yard line even on their half the field well they certainly need it i wish we had a booth cam hink the mascot for butler has joined us hey you want to say anything to the people just blowing kisses i love it Colosimo, deep ball over the middle that is deflected but there's going to be a penalty and that is, you can hear the crowd very unhappy from where we saw it. You could see his jersey being pulled down below his shoulder pads before the ball was even close. That's, while you don't want it to happen, that unfortunately was a good call. 
Looked like he got there early too before the ball was ever there. That's yeah. That was definitely that was yeah. You I mean when they learn how to call a pass interference in referee school, that's probably a video they would show. Jaden Waddell, the intended receiver. The parents very unhappy, and the fans very unhappy with that call. Well, the penalty on the field was called on Rousseau, but Aguilar was in coverage, and that was the uh -huh. corrected stat there. Well, it's first down and 10 from the 37-yard line. And off. Coy Williams lowers the shoulder, and he'll get about five yards. Call it six. Coy, Coy Williams had his 10th touchdown after he scampered in the end zone in the first half. Leads the, F, leads the FCS in total points and touchdowns. And big number 27. Senior out of Lumberton, Texas. Bringing his talents to Davidson, North Carolina. They've been happy to have him for so long and how effective he's been. Fake, Colosimo. Wide open is McCurdy. Kozlowski giving chase, but McCurdy's going to fly into the end zone. A 57-yard touchdown. Excuse me, Braden Oakley. Oakley was wide open on the wheel route, Drew, and he's off to the races. And we are starting to see glimpses of what happened against San Diego here at home two weeks ago where they went on that 38 unanswered point run, opening up the start of the third quarter here with a 14-0 run. Got to get something going on offense if you want to stay in this game. Well, that's a tough pill to swallow if you're Butler. As Benofsky knocks it through, 57-yard touchdown. Their second 57-yard touchdown play. Five plays, nine yard, uh, 90 yards. Two minutes and 55 seconds elapsed. And Davidson has doubled their lead. Last week they scored... 28 in the second quarter, another 30, another 21 in the third quarter. Presbyterian just didn't have an answer. Six touchdowns in the second half. And we are talking about it earlier, how clean of a game Butler has been able to play so far. And, and, and that penalty there on Thomas Russo, you usually don't see a lot. The secondary has been a strong point for this defense, uh, an unfortunate call but it was definitely the right call for that situation they could have called it uh, there or um, there were definitely some some other things too just unfortunate but now how do you bounce back is the real question that you have to be able to answer you got to stand up and put some points on the board Six forty nine to go in the third quarter. Audia and AJ Dinehart back deep to return. Audia gets tackled from behind by Jack Wise. Fifteen yard return for Audia. Well, the Bulldogs need a touchdown, obviously. They had uh, a touchdown taken away via the penalty for Yogi Flogger's illegal touching, going out of bounds, coming back into play. First down and ten the but it's first and ten, new drive. Looking for new life. Deinhardt 
meaning a wall of Wildcat defenders at the line of scrimmage. Initial hit by Aaron Warren. The Davidson sideline pretty pumped up there. And this is where you can get into some trouble. They are playing with a lot of energy, starting to get maybe a little defeated going down three scores. You have to keep your composure. You have to be able to move the ball or this game is going to be almost over with six minutes left in the third quarter. Still plenty of time. Quick out. Suchovitz lowers the shoulder. He'll be short of the first down. It'll bring up third down and two. And a good response. Now you just got to get this first down and just one play after another. You're not going to make up all 21 points on one play or one drive. For as cliche as it is, it's the truth. And so you just got to be able to go play after play, move that ball down the field, albeit quickly. You, yeah. wanna, you yeah. don't have a ton of time, but just keep going play by play. Empty backfield for Bushka. Two tight ends set. Dinehart in motion. Dinehart's going to take it. Hit on the play by Draylon Hines to bring up fourth down. And you're 100% on fourth down today. Two for two. Looks like they are going to go for it. If you're Butler, this is probably the play of the game thus far. 100%. And I think, too, there's really no thought here. I mean, you are down three scores. You, you have to go for it. Looks like they're going to put such of it back at kind of that fullback lead blocking position. It'll be interesting to see if they have A.J. follow his block or if they run him to the other side. Fake handoff. Bushka reverses fields. Bushka, he's going to take a sack. His seventh on the year, Jonathan Hammond. He was PFL Defensive Player of the Week last week for plays like that. Sacking Bushka, and that's going to be a turnover on downs for the Bulldogs, and they give the ball right back to Davidson. So far, that play had been working very well, just giving that ball off, having one of the tight ends lead block. It seems like almost getting a little too smart and trying to make them think, oh, it's going to be a run to the strong side. We'll just have a little pass out. Yep. Outsmarted yourself, and, uh, and then a turnover on downs and an offense that so far has not been able to be stopped having a short field starting on the 33-yard line. Jonathan Hammond was the benefactor of that play, but it was because of the pressure on the right side of the offensive line. Here's Turner breaking tackles, gaining eight yards to bring up second down and two. Well, you're right. I mean, the momentum shift really does come from plays like that where it's make or break. If you're Butler, you have to get that first down to, to stay alive. You're down by 21 points. And you've shown, you show the whole first half that you could keep pace. All of a sudden you give up a couple scores and now it's now it seems a little more bleak. Second down and two. Colosimo lofting one. Waddell's got it inside the five. And they went away. Staples on the catch. And they went away from what is working after that 21 yard completion. Having Brett go out on those sprint outs, using his feet to move the pocket, having A.J. Dinehart and Michael Benefield run the ball almost right up the middle and get a lot of yards, and they went away from. Eli Turner gets it on the jet sweep, and he will sneak into the end zone. Touchdown, Wildcats. Four-yard touchdown after the deep play to Staples. That drive, three plays, 33 yards. And after just 11 and a half minutes coming off of the game clock, it has gone from a seven-point game to a 28-point lead for Davidson. Bonofsky boots that one through. Check out 
the newest online spot for the latest in Butler football clothing. Head to butlerbulldoggear.com. Other scores around college football today, particularly in the Pioneer League. Moorhead State is up by just three over Marist, 27-24 with a minute to go. Marist is driving. They're on their own 30-yard line, second and 16. Of course, our score here, 49-21. Valparaiso leads Dayton 24-20 in the third quarter. San Diego leads Presbyterian 35 21 in the third, and of course, Stetson and Drake getting canceled today. Keep a close watch on the Marist game to keep you updated. Of course, the winner of that game will stay undefeated in the PFL. Davidson, Marist, and Moorhead tied for first right now in the league. Banowski boots it. Audia taking it on the run. Right sideline. Good move. He gets hit hard by number six, Jordan Burrell. An 11 yard return, and the penalty that has been looming for quite some time is looks like it's going to be another sideline warning. It looked they like. Go. He, they did go hard on the celebration. <laughs> it, look, it looked like they went a little hard on the celebration. It looked like we might have, the tackler might have flexed over the top of Audia. Well, it wasn't the player that made the play, but Colin Johnson, the guilty culprit. giving up those penalties went up by 28 points don't seem to hurt as much but still it could come back later on in the season again averaging 72 penalty yards a game coming in today so far well Push over to flogger off the screen stiff arm flogger trot out of bounds so far at 9 for 95 after Flogger had that 13-yard reception. It'll be interesting to see if they're able to clean that up as the season progresses. Bulldog first, and ten at the down first down and 10. Great play from Butler on the first play of the drive. Bushka is 12 for 20, 92 yards through the air. And a touchdown thus far. Hand off to Benefield. Lower the shoulder and gain a few more yards. Second down and eight upcoming. Trips to Bushka's right. Zips it out to Benefield. And he'll gain just one yard off the bubble screen. Moorhead State turns it over on downs against Marist, and they're going to take a knee with 20 seconds left to stay undefeated in the PFL this year. Moorhead State really coming on the scene. They're another team. Similar to Davidson, Drew, where you get a new coach a few years ago. You have a quarterback that has feels like Mark Pappas has been there forever, and he just performs and performs and performs. Now I think they're reaping the reward as well. Benefield throws a stiff arm, and he'll be knocked just short of the first down. I think Butler will probably go for it here. Yeah, not really much of a decision to make here. Have to go for it down. Four scores, 
again, running the ball very effectively. They've been stopped a couple times, but overall still able to move the ball when you hand it off to Michael Benefield or A.J. Dinehart. Austin Schwantz in there. Along with the extra tight end, Jack Turner. Of course, acting tight end. O'Shea was in motion, but I think this might be a false start on Butler. Well, that doesn't help at all. Fourth and six is going to be down in distance here. Penalty pushes the dogs back to fourth down and six at the 46-yard line. A minute four to go here in the third quarter. Bushka over the middle to Flogger. Big catch, but a big hit. Colin Johnson, nope, excuse me. Cade Vila with the stick. Doesn't matter. It's a first down for the Dogs. Great play over the middle. Pistol strong eye for Butler. O'Shea in motion. Benefield. He'll be stopped at the line of scrimmage. Brought down. Forward progress will give him two yards. And that will take us in to the fourth quarter. That it will. Our score, 49-21 in favor of the Wildcats. You're watching PFL Football on the Butler Athletics YouTube page. Welcome back to the Button Jackie Selleck Bowl. Davidson leads 49 to 21. Dogs are facing a second and eight on the Davidson 32 yard line. This drive so far, six plays and 46 yards. Heading into the fourth quarter, the second half got a little bit ugly quick, Drew, and you could attribute a lot of that to Davidson just being aggressive with play action, hitting a 
receiver through the uh, through the air on a wheel route for a long touchdown and then just running the football. And it seems like, too, the offense went away from what was working. It seemed like they went away from the run a little bit more. It seemed like they well, started – talking about. Yeah, I'm talking about – yeah, they – they just started to do what was – you knew that Davidson was going to come out and score more than likely. They are a prolific offense. But your offense was going toe-to-toe -to -toe almost the whole way in the first half, and then it seemed like the play calling has changed a little bit. Benefield, sweep to the right side. Breaks a tackle. Dude keeps his feet moving. There's a flag on the play. That's a 12-yard gain from Michael Benefield. Unfortunately, may get called back. Looked like the ref gave it all the arm he had to throw it as close as he could to the line of scrimmage. Maybe a holding call on the dogs. Well, that'll be Grant Perley with a block below the waist. Which we saw Davidson earlier have a penalty, the exact same penalty called against them for cutting outside the box, that area where the linebackers and D-line and linemen all are otherwise known as the trenches. That's the only time you can really throw a cut block. And but Grant, this will be a huge penalty, second and 19. Huge penalty, and Grant Perley usually is in the trenches. He didn't seem to like the call after it was made. Right. Bushka, fake handoff, makes Jonathan Hammond miss, finds Schwantz, who plucks it off the turf. Good gain. For the senior from Palatine, Illinois, from high school. And now if you're the Butler offense, you have two plays to get this first down. You're definitely going to go for it on fourth down, so you don't need a home run play right here. You can just get five or six yards, set yourself up for an easier fourth down conversion. Flogger in motion. Bushka. Sets up the screen to Benefield, and Davidson is right there. Benefield luckily spun out of that. Otherwise, it would have been a big hit. This will be fourth down and ten. Ten and a half. The screens so far today have not worked out very well for the offense. Very well defended throughout the first three quarters of play by the Davidson defense, setting up. Like you said, a fourth and ten and a half, so really closer to a fourth and 11. Well, this is a big play for Butler. Opportunity to get back into this one. 13-13 left to go. Bushka. Moving around the pocket. Stepping up. Got Hammond behind him who forces a fumble. And falling on it is number 44, Chichi Odu. I think you've been waiting all day to call that that name it's out. A great name. Great name. Chibuki Odu. Odo, excuse me. Forced fumble for Jonathan Hammond. His second on the year. And that is the first turnover of the game. It is the first turnover game. Again, another, but again, coming at. Well, actually, it's not. I think. Well, Mark Brower just said turnover on downs. But David said for sure recovered that. Yeah, they for sure recovered yeah. it. So turnover, regardless of turnover, but turnover via fumble. Colosimo, hands off. Penalty flag on the field. A lot of false starts here for Davidson today. Oh. 
brings that total up to 10 penalties for 100 yards. I bring but, up first down and 15. Just under 13 to play here in this one. Colosimo up the middle, handoff. Taking that one was Bernard Turner. Bernard Turner Jr. on the carry for Davidson. Mac Menard on the stop for the Bulldogs. Mac Menard on the stop. Second and 12 from the 36. Again, those 10 penalties have not hampered this offense or defense at all throughout this game. Colosimo, out route to the right. Caught by Waddell. It looked like he could just never get his feet under him right there. Stumbled when he broke out of the route and then stumbling again when he caught it. But still a positive yard. It brings up third and eight on the 40, on the 39. Let's see if Butler can force the first punt of this game for Davidson. Colosimo pitches it back out to Turner. He'll be tripped up by Mac Menard, who's made quite a few plays today. Menard leads all tacklers. That is his sixth solo tackle of the day, his ninth total. And that'll bring up fourth down. And this is the first punt of the day for Evan Pritchard. Butler brought the house. Nobody got home, though. Audio briefly fumbled that one into his own arms. Gets a couple yards on the return. Nick Baker on the stop. Certainly had some words for him afterwards. Pumped up. Well, Butler has 10.45 here on the clock. Bushka still out there. Still no sign of Nick Orlando, which is interesting. Since we've seen so much of him in the spring, even dating back to 2019. Quick out to Suchovitz, his third catch on the day, and he'll be pushed out of bounds. Push his pass complete to 85, Jared Suchovitz. Jake Alexander on the stop. His fifth tackle on the day. Bushka so far, 17 to 25, 118 yards, one touchdown. Leading rusher today is A.J. Deinhardt. They'll give to Suchi here. Suchi makes one man miss and throws a stiff arm. Spins out past the 50-yard line to the 45. And that he had the lone touchdown last week for the Bulldogs. And that may just be the little spark they needed to go down here and score and just get the game a little bit closer. Nineteen yard gain and the results in a first down. Suchi again cuts up inside, met by Alexander, and will gain two yards. Well, Jonathan Hammond was named the spring PFL Defensive Player of the Year. Got PFL Defensive Player of the Week last week. Scott Abel was the 
PFL Coach of the Year. See Chichi Odo, Odo down there. Hate to see any players down. Actually, that's Darren Kindles, excuse me. But he gets back up quickly. Speaking of Odu, Odo, is named a member of the 2021 All-State AFCA Good Works team. And he's the fifth Davidson Wildcat to be elected to that team. He also, large part, large in part due to his facilitation of Let's Talk About It, a scholar athlete forum to create better team culture, community involvement, and campus engagement. Here's Suchi on the run. And there would be a flag thrown on the field before we get to that penalty. Drew, you yourself were on the AFCA Good Works team for Allstate. Very, very long time ago. Definitely more of, it should be more of a team award than a personal award. It was a lot of the guys on the team uh, that led to that. So. Well, you're too humble to admit, but it was, uh, Drew, was, Drew was putting lots of his efforts into spending time with our team's adoption of Robert Schaefer, a young child with kidney deficiencies. Let's hear from Mike Packard here. So this is a penalty on two players, Colton Rulin and Beistel for a chop block. To round out the thought about the All-State Good Works team established in 1992 recognize a, to recognize a select group of college football players who have made a commitment to service and enriching the lives of others. And you and Chi-Chi and several others have certainly done that, Drew. All right, Bushka. With Suchi in the backfield after a long penalty. Second and 23. Lofting it to Johnny O'Shea. What a catch! <laughs> 25 yards through the air. O'Shea on the sideline. Have not called his name a lot. Coming off of injury, but that is what we are used to seeing out of Johnny O'Shea, getting up and getting the ball, mossing him, if you will. Yeah, Caden Walken, Caden Jenkins, excuse me. Brings up the first down at the 33. Bushka, play action. Going to take a shot to O'Shea a little long. In coverage was Jordan Burrell. Second down. Well, with Moorhead State winning, barring a massive comeback uh, by Butler, Davidson will head to Moorhead, Kentucky next week. And a battle of undefeateds should the Wildcats win. Suchi lowers the shoulder, gets a couple more yards past the first down marker. Butler will travel to Dayton next week to face off against the Flyers, the red letter game. Flogger in motion. Bushko will hand off to Suchi again. Suchi will gain about five yards. Chichi Odo on the stop. Butler with 143 pass yards, 187 rush yards, and now 191. Both teams pretty much even at first, as far as first downs go. Davidson with 19, Butler with 18.
Bushka will fake to Suchi and whip it out to Flogger. And he'll be dragged out of bounds for a couple yard gain. There's some extracurricular there between Nate Walker and Burrell. Just playing hard through the whistle. And this Bulldog team is showing no quit, which is good to see. Y you hear people toss around term moral victories, um, but at the end of the day, like, those don't count, you know, in, in, the, in the win or loss column. But it is still good to see the fight and not just laying down. and still trying to score and playing hard. Flogger in motion. Bushka takes it himself. Make it some man miss. Spins out. What an effort for Brett Bushka. A 14-yard skipper. Showing his versatility, juking a guy out of his shoes, then throwing a spin move, then taking a hit, and still finding his way into the end zone. And with the extra point, that will make it 49-28. And we see the entrance of J.J. Wattis again uh, for that extra point. What will be interesting to see and very telling for the rest of this game is what are they going to come out with? Are they going to come out and try an onside kick, see if they can score and make it a 14-point game? Or are they going to kick the ball away, uh, which kind of sends a signal for how this game may or may not end. It'll be interesting to see here what they do. That scoring drive, 10 plays, 70 yards, four and a half minutes. Start of the fourth quarter, Valparaiso leads Dayton 31-20. San Diego leads Presbyterian 55-21. They're spending a little extra time in the huddle here. Luca was talking to the sideline rep. It looks like they may be doing something. Now, there are a couple options you have. You can line up in the onside kick, obviously. You can also go for a sky or a pooch kick and see if you can get under it. But usually the conference in the huddle for a kickoff does not take this long for either side. So it seems like they may have something, which is good to see that fight left in the dogs to try to get back in this game. And, and, yep, it looks like we are coming out for an onside kick. Going to go from the bottom of your screen to the top. And what you're looking for here out of Luca is the rules on onside kicks are kind of confusing. You can't do like a kangaroo hop where you have one big bounce because as long as if the ball only bounces once, you can still call for a fair catch. So what you're hoping here is you're going to get that ball to roll really, really quick right around to the nine yard, and then it'll take a big bounce kind of like that, but just hopefully – a little farther away from them and a little bit closer to where your guys are running. But again, good to see the fight out of the dogs to still try to claw back into this game. Unfortunate, because now you give away good field position, but I think just the message you send by saying we're not going out of this game, we're going to try to get back in it, is still huge for your team. Waddell was right there to recover it. And I think you're right. I think the bounce was good. 616 left here for Davidson to start their drive on the 46 yard line. Handoff. Turner. Caught up in the scrum. He'll gain six yards. Well, Davidson rushing their leader, Eris Hilliard, on three attempts, two touchdowns, 108 yards. Next up, Coy Williams, Dylan Sparks. Williams with 65, Sparks with 44. Lewis Calasimo has 43 yards of his own. Eli Turner with 33. Mark McCurdy with 20. Bernard Turner stopped at the line. Behind the line, in fact. Corba on the initial hit. And cleaning up was Gabe Hicks and Bradley McGee. 
you get him to punt here, score quick. Suddenly it's a 14-point game with maybe three and a half minutes left. There's still there's still a glimmer here. Not not a huge one. But there's a chance. Third down and five for Davidson. Third down and five. Calasimo. Turn it behind him. He'll keep it himself. Running for the first down marker, Mac Menard will push him out of bounds. And that'll move the chains for the Wildcats. And that's a stop you really needed uh, if, if you're the Bulldogs. Seven yard gain for Colosimo. And at quarterback now is Burrell. He'll hand off up the middle. Stop behind the line is Bernard Turner Jr. And this Bulldog team refusing to go away, burning that timeout. Still have two left. Still trying to force that punt. Get the ball back and score quick and see if you can't fight back into this game. Refusing to go away with 421 left here. It kind of goes back to the end of the half. Do you kind of wish you took a shot with 12 seconds left? That's enough for one or two pass plays starting around your own 40. Yeah, you that's a good point. You give up that touchdown, and you obviously need points. You know you're going to give the ball right back. Maybe it would have been smart to at least try it. I mean, they ran the ball. But I mean, that's pretty customary for teams to just run the ball at the end of the half. Take it in the locker room. But at the same time, maybe it could have been a momentum. You know, I guess you'll never know. Yeah, I mean, the odds are probably 99% chance that you w you will not score there, but there still is that chance, and you never know. You've seen that you're able to gain 50, 60 yards on this team. It would have been interesting to see if that would have changed anything. So Burrell in a quarterback. He'll pitch out left side and being brought down by Tommy Carlson is Aaron Mayoni. So Butler will take a timeout. Let's take a look at the PFL standings. So if Davidson finishes this out, they'll go to 4-0 in conference. Moorhead State moves to 4-0 in conference. Those teams play next week next up candidates that would have as many wins in conference would be San Diego at four and one they're up big against Presbyterian St. Thomas is on by this week but there's they stand at three and one so you'd have Mariston St. Thomas tied for third and San Diego moved to second and these timeouts here not to get you away from that they no, kind no. of fire me up a little bit because usually we've seen this team sometimes down by three scores with, you know, three, four minutes left to play. They are Sometimes they just let that clock run out. They're saying, no, no, no. We are going to call these timeouts. We're going to make you work for it. We're going to see if we can score here and make this a two-touchdown game and see what happens. This this is kind of a different look. It is, yeah. Yeah, we at least during, against, the San, against San Diego, last time Butler was at home, we saw them kind of lie down at the end, not take timeouts like that to reassess. I missed the big third down. With Burrell and a QB. Turner in the backfield. Pitch out. Taking him down is TC, Tommy Carlson. Aris Hilliard had nowhere to go. Loses seven yards and Butler takes another timeout 405 to go fourth down and 12 well there you go big play from one of your from your third leading tackler on the team 
and Tommy Carlson. And Coach Abel not looking happy, not really talking to any of his players, kind of walking around. It seems like he he might be a little frustrated with his guys, and I can imagine why. You you have given this team just a little bit of hope. Crazier things have happened than a 21-point comeback with, with over four minutes left to play. It, it is definitely sure doable. Yep. I mean, I, it's a, a lot of things have to fall into place, but you're definitely making them sweat a little bit right now if you're Butler refusing to go away. I mean, this is, again, a totally different look from other times we have seen. And you have to be very weary of a fake here. Yeah, you do. Be because they want to put this game away. If they get this first down, you have no timeouts left. This game is over. Oh, their offense is coming back on the field. So they marked a three-yard loss, not a seven-yard loss. Forward progress stood there. But keeping their offense on the field is Davidson. Burrell drops back. Launches one to the right sideline. Reaching for it was McCurdy, but it's incomplete and a turnover on downs. Butler's defense stands tall. And they've got four minutes on the clock left to play here. And if you're Butler, this has to continue to fuel your fire because they basically just said, we're fine giving you the ball back at the 45. We don't think you'll be able to score quickly and then get the ball back. I mean, I mean, I think that has to make you want to just show them that was a mistake and at least make them you know, second guess that decision. Dinehart, a lot of room. He'll be tripped up past the first down line. And a big timeout, Davidson. And a big 19-yard run. The clock will stop as the chain set. And now you're seeing Davidson call a timeout after a gashing run. I think they may start be starting to get a little nervous. I could be wrong, <laughs> but usually, I mean, you haven't seen them call a timeout like that yet so far this game. It, after a big run. Well, you're up by 21. Ball on the 41-yard line. Butler runs it. Huge gain. Do you think they take a shot here? Part of me wants to say yes, but part of me also wants to say don't go away from what's working. You've broken a huge run for a touchdown one time. Michael Benefield, I think, had, what, a 16-yard run for a touchdown. Now, I mean, the problem is you're going to have the clock – continue to run, but most of your touchdowns have been off running plays. So uh, the long answer was that. The short answer is I don't know. <laughs> um, but I think you have to try at least one at least, deep shot in the tried, air. Yeah. And then if it doesn't work, then you go back to the run, which has been working much better for you. Well, Sam Rogers is out wide. Rusk in the slot along with Yogi Flogger. But they'll hand off to Dinehart. He'll gain... A solid six yards. Butler's going to have to run some hurry, run some no t no huddle. Bushka wants to go deep. He's going to have to juke some defenders, and he ends up throwing it out of bounds. Smartly pressure there by 52, Jared Price. Thank you for the clarification, Mike Packard. Bush got out of the pocket. No intentional grounding with that throwaway. Third down and four from the 35. Three and a half left to go here on West 49th Street. Bushka. Scramble drill. Dinehart with the intended receiver. Bushka's pass intended for A.J. Dinehart falls incomplete. That'll bring up fourth down. 
And guys you have to key on here are Johnny O'Shea and Yogi Flogger, probably the two go-to guys for Brett Bushka. Bulldogs need this one. Fourth down. Bushka. To Sam Rogers. What a great catch and a first down, but there is a flag in the backfield. Bushka's pass complete to Sam Rogers. Flag on the field. Let's see what this penalty is. Did he get hit? I did not see. I didn't see it either. Another long conference. They are definitely making sure they make the right call. Some of the Bulldogs have pointed the other way. Uh, uh, others have put their hands up in frustration, thinking it might be on them. That foul. Tyler Solomon. The culprit there, hands to the face. And a huge penalty, half the distance to the goal. Big catch by Sam Rogers, though, over the middle. First down and 10 from the 12 yard line. Deinhardt being chased by Hammond. He spins out of one tackle. The big hit didn't work there by Caden Jenkins. Zeinhardt keeps his feet moving, and it's second down. And now you have to hurry up if you're that Bulldog offense. You have no timeouts. You are stayed in bounds. That clock is going to keep running. You don't really have time to huddle. you got to go, 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 and try to punch this ball in. Player coming out late for Davidson. Bushka's going to air it out to Flogger. Touchdown! Bushka to Flogger. An eight yard touchdown pass off the rub route. O only taking a minute off the clock. If there was ever a time for a comeback like this, everything is falling into place right now. Penalties, them deciding not to punt it, giving you great field position. So far, everything is falling into place for the Butler Bulldogs will see if they can get this onside kick. And you don't really need to change anything from last time. You got the hop you wanted. You got you got everything you wanted. You just aimed a little bit too far down the field. The ball looked like it curved a little bit on him too. If you can do the same exact thing, but just get it a little bit closer to the 45 rather on your side on your side of the field right, rather right. than the opposing 45. Well, the outside kick's going to be huge. And if Luca could get the same type of ball, no, no, I'm not. I'm no kicker guy, but if he can get the same type of ball hit off his foot, I have to imagine that they're going to be set up nicely. Maybe just a little more bounce off the second hop. Just a little more bounce. I think it's hard too because you're kind of uh, you're at the mercy of the ball at that point because you because you don't know. Oh, if the ball spins three times really quickly on that fourth time, it's going to hit a big bounce. You never really know. You're kind of playing. A guessing game you're hoping if I hit the ball at the same exact spot then it'll hopefully do the same exact thing it's it's hard to control and we'll see if they set up in the middle here instead of the left or the right we see Bushka and Flogger there on your screen and that both these guys have really had established a great connection today Flogger has been targeted 12 times he's got 10 receptions 68 yards two touchdowns Actually had his second touchdown of the day called back for illegal touching, going out of bounds, coming back in. But he gets the second one there. 49-35, our score, Zurich sets up. This one is secured. Off the first hop by Braden Oakley. And with a recovery like that, 2.28 to go. 
That will set up Davidson to run the clock out. Unfortunate again, getting it a little too close to that front line of Davidson. Pretty much wrapping up our game here, down two scores with two and a half minutes left, no timeouts. But you still got to appreciate the fight they showed in the – and just not being willing to quit. Turner up the middle. Calcimo is back in there, but Burrell will sub out onto the field. Valparaiso still leading Dayton, 38-28 with 10 minutes to go in the fourth. Second down and seven. And off. Williams. Actually, Mayoni. Austin Corbo with the stop, third down. Well, you look ahead, Dayton will go, if they lose to Valpo, will go two, to two and three in the conference. Butler drops this one, they will go to 0 and five. And that rivalry means a lot to both of those teams next week, Butler and Dayton. Certainly not fans of each other. Burrell, handoff, stymied up the middle, that's Gunner Liondecker. What will be interesting to see here is do they run another offensive play or do they let the clock tick all the way down? 20 seconds left on the play clock. That will bring us down to 20 seconds left in the game. You take the penalty, then you just uh, – and then you just have a little bit more room for your punter. You pooch it down there, and then they have 20 seconds. They have 20 seconds left to try to score. I think that might be the case. Scott Abel is going to take the timeout. Timeout. Want to give a quick shout out to Sports Media Class 350 for our production today. You guys rock! Silently celebrating because they don't be caught on the hot mic. Thanks a lot for your hard work party people and thanks to professor Nick White for organizing the production today the cats will go to face the Eagles of Moorhead State next week for battle of the unbeatens in the PFL after Moorhead State defeated Maris today Davidson will move to 4-0 in the conference as well and unless St. Thomas or San Diego creeps up in the standings, Drew, next week is really a battle for who might win the PFL this year. Yeah, and Moorhead State is – they can be a dangerous team. They're a wagon. Yeah, they – They're uh, really, really tough. And they uh, – I mean, a couple games ago, 700 yards of total offense. Right. I mean, that's – good luck stopping that. Yep. But they – Bird, Mark Pappas, I mean – Solid, solid crew down there. Yeah, they can, they may come out like that, or you'll see the team from last week where Butler had four interceptions in the first half. Right. I mean, you you really never know exactly what team's going to show up, but that's all, that's also what makes them so dangerous. Five, so this will be a fourth down and five. Burrell in shotgun. He'll keep it himself. Get the first down and more. Burrell's on the run, but he's brought down by Connor Reed at the 20-yard line. 14 seconds left to go. 21-yard gain for Burrell. And Davidson will let the clock run out. They'll move to 4-0 in the conference. Butler couldn't find their first win in the PFL this season today. But looking ahead to next week, Drew, quick hits for each team uh, for Butler. They go to Dayton next week. Dayton losing to Valpo right now in the fourth quarter. If they lose, they move to two and three. You're kind of fighting against a maybe depleted Dayton team that you're not used to seeing. 
And with what you provided on offense today, the sparks that we saw, it could, it could look good for Butler going into uh, Dayton, Ohio next weekend. I agree, and I think it comes down to two main things. One, you have to take advantage of the mistakes the other team makes. We say it time and time again, and yet time and time again, they have not been able to do that. You have to take what they give you. You have to be able to make them pay. Last week it was four interceptions, no points scored off it. Today it was over It was over 10 penalties for over 100 yards, and there was no consequence for it. You have to make the other team pay. And secondly, I think you have to come out and start the second half strong. We saw it this week. We saw it against San Diego. You let these teams, one team go for a 28-point unanswered run, the other team a 38-point unanswered run. That can't happen. You have to start the second half just like you played the first half. You're able to stay toe-to-toe with both of, both of these teams, and then suddenly in the third quarter, you let it get away from you. you right, that, right. That, that just can't happen. So I think this team has what it takes. I mean, they've shown they can compete, but can you, but can you compete for a full game? Well, next week, Butler travels to Dayton, and in two weeks, you'll be back here at the Button Jackie Selleck Bowl for the Hoosier Helmet game versus Valparaiso. For SPM 350, for Drew Bevelheimer, I'm Joey Lindstrom. Thank you so much for watching PFL matchup today. Butler falls to 2-6. and six. Davidson moves to 5-1. and one. This has been a presentation of FCS Football on the Butler Athletics YouTube page. Today, we are at Butler University's Recreational Center for the 5G Hackathon. We caught up with some of the participants to learn about what goes on at the Hackathon and why Butler University decided to host it. Yeah, so the Hackathon is 48 hours where um, students, both high school and college and above, even adults, can come and participate and just solve a problem that AT&T and the Indiana Sports Network want to be solved. So this year you can choose categories of fan engagement, IoT, which is Internet of Things, and then um, event safety precautions. So you can choose one of those three to register in. And then um, there's other areas you can also incorporate, such as like accessibility, 5G, IBM's cloud. Um, so yeah, it's just creating whatever you think would be the best solution to that. So my group, we're creating a mobile application and then a website sort of explaining what